two explosive offenses get together this evening on Toyota's Friday Night Rivals. We come to you this evening from Hilliard Bradley. We're in the OCC Central, where the 7-0 third-ranked Jaguars get set to play host to the 2-5 Patriots of Olin Tangy Liberty. We are so glad to have you with us this evening, along with Jay Richardson. I'm Marty Bannister. We will hear from Kellyanne Stitz coming up in a couple of moments. Both these teams, Jay, can move the ball up and down the field. Should be a good one tonight. Yeah, this will not be a three yards and cloud of dust kind of night. Both of these teams can sling it. The ball is going to be in this windy air, and points will be scored. And when we talk about these two teams, the reason they can move it up and down the field is the play of their quarterbacks. John Sansbury at Olin Tangy Liberty takes over the job at his alma mater, and he inherited a pretty good one in returning starter Andrew Leonard. Yeah, so important to have Leonard's leadership and have his continuity. This kid understands what this offense needs to go, and he makes it all happen. Leading rusher and leading passer on this Olin Tangy Liberty team. For Hilliard Bradley head coach Mike Laparo, this could very well be his best football team, and he's had some pretty good ones here. And the reason he feels that way, Jay, is Braden Flea Hardy. Yeah, Flea Hardy is a next level athlete. The guy the kid's a next level competitor. Uh, commit to Yale. We'll talk more about him, but he does it all for this team. Another guy who also leads the team in rushing and in passing. Should be a good one tonight. It's windy. It's football weather in Central Ohio, and we're looking forward to this one tonight. Hilliard Bradley, Olin Tangy Liberty, Toyota's Friday Night Rivals kick is coming up next. Open didn't look half bad after all. Mm -hmm. Came out nice. Also means it wasn't half good. <laughs> <laughs> Captain's meeting at the midfield stripe as we close in on tonight's opening kickoff. Our coin toss brought to you by Hilliard Lawn and Garden, a proud sponsor of tonight's coin toss. Hilliard Bradley won the toss, and the Jaguars elected to go on defense to start the game tonight. So the Olin Tangy Liberty Patriots will get the football first in this OCC Central Division matchup with Olin Tangy Liberty at 2-5 and five and Hilliard Bradley at 7-0. and oh. Tonight's kickoff is sponsored by MakeItMakeSense.org. Scan the QR code on the screen to get youths and adults the help they need to quit smoking and vaping. 
Bradley rolling at 7-0 this season. It may be one of the best teams that Mike Laparo has had as the head coach at Hillary Bradley, and he's had some pretty good ones as he coaches this program in his 12th season while Olin Tangy Liberty comes in at 2-5. And, and Jay Richardson, you get to this point of a season, and even though you're 2-5, and five, we touched on it a short time ago, Liberty's one of those teams, this is the time of the year when they kind of find themselves and they get ready to make a big run towards the postseason. Yeah, it's all about a rhythm. I mean, you look at the Cincinnati Bengals, and they struggled early on in the season last season and really caught stride. Not saying that'll happen here, but what I'm saying is you do find a rhythm as a team. You find out what works for you. Obviously, you know, new head coach, you're trying to get into some sort of a flow. If they can find it, this can be competitive. Jacob Walter will kick the football away to get things started tonight here at Bradley. The Liberty Patriots last week beat a good Upper Arlington team in overtime 1916, while last week Hilliard Bradley beat its district rival Hilliard Davidson 37 to 10. They beat both Hilliards this year, did Bradley. Earlier this year in game number two, they knocked off Hilliard Darby by the score of 28 to 10. Jacob Walter to kick it away. Alex Rucker, one of the deep backs, and he will come underneath this one and field it. We're underway tonight at Bradley. So good to have you with us here on this football Friday here on the CW Columbus. And Rucker's return carries the ball out across the 20-yard line. We mentioned this Liberty offense, a very powerful one, but as we introduce the third member of our crew, Kelly Ann Stitz, it's missing a very valuable performer tonight. Yeah, Coach Sansbury told me that starting running back Jake Strzok is out tonight with an injury. He tried to give it a go in practice on Wednesday, but just couldn't do it. He he is a huge weapon for Liberty, caught the game-winning touchdown last week and will be missed. But in his place tonight is Ryan Schapker holding it down in the offensive backfield. He's described as a physical running back, the strongest guy on the team. And while the Patriots like to air it out, they are confident in his ability to run the rock when needed. Guys. There's, there's Schapker, 141 yards rushing. And Kellyanne, thank you very much. We look forward to hearing from you as the night goes on. Leonard to throw the first play from scrimmage. And this to the far side. And this is a catch and a good one over there on the far side as Wilson Roberts with his 24th catch of the season went airborne to haul that one and we just mentioned Roberts there you see the offense and Schapker in at that running back spot Andrew Leonard this year 225 yards passing last week against Upper Arlington 242 yards rushing on the season and is the leading rusher on this Liberty offense he was a starter last season it's Schapker with his first touch of the night and gets bumped off balance a yard shy of the first down out of the 29 yard line and the Liberty offense will have a third and short coming up. There's the Bradley defense. Watch Ethan Tebbets at one of those linebacker spots. Mike Laparo very high on that young man, one of their leading tacklers, and has track speed from that linebacker position. A quick third down upcoming for the Olentangy Liberty Patriots. We're just underway tonight. Temperature expected to drop into the 40s tonight. As we touched on, it is certainly football weather. Leonard with an empty backfield will fire and has a receiver, Toby Gage, with the catch and spins out across the 40. And just like that, Olin Tangy Liberty with the first first down of the game tonight. That's a Buckeye State Bank first down. Buckeye State Bank, together we win. A lot of times in the spread offense, Jay Richardson, teams will go empty out of the backfield. How's that help a quarterback? Oh, it's all about tempo for a quarterback. It's about finding the rhythms, getting some easy throws. You saw a fantastic catch by the wide receiver there, Roberts, early on to get things started on the, on the sideline. And then he's operating in the seams now this quarterback is and moving the ball right down the middle of the field defenses hate this Andrew Leonard out to the midfield stride 242 yards rushing coming into the game and here you'll see Leonard just wait for that hole to open and navigate his way through it before he was brought down by Nicola Kissin a 6'2 220 pound senior linebacker they go out of the 3-4 look or 3-5 look defensively to the Bradley Jaguars and here is Leonard rolling the throw now on second down. He's hitting the backfield and dropped big nice pressure that play. time. As racing in to make the hit, Julian Dandridge, 44 tackles coming into the game and now five tackles for a loss. Great play there by Dandridge. Beautiful, just getting right through off that blocker, getting his hands free and making a big, big impact play. Four sacks on the season. That is the kind of play you want to see out of your defensive end. Play loss back to the 41-yard line, so it'll be a third down and 11 upcoming for Liberty. Two and five on the season, one and one in the central. Protection starts to break down. Leonard off the back foot, heaves it upfield. Oh, and what a catch in traffic by Toby Gage. And he's out across the 40 into Bradley territory. Another Buckeye State Bank first down. Jay, that was a heck of a catch right there. Heck of a catch. And oh, by the way, up front, another huge play by 52 Dandridge. Just 6'5", 245 pounds right in your face. And to still deliver that strike is unbelievable and great catch by Gage. 
Last four games, Toby Gage, 21 catches, tacked two more onto that total. High snap that Leonard pulls in and then takes a pretty good pop as he got back to the line of scrimmage. But look at the muscle right there. Look at the he, toughness. Yeah, as he fires ahead across the 35-yard line to the 34. That was just effort and physical ability right there by Andrew Leonard. Marty, that was a broken play that shouldn't have gotten more than one yard that he just muscled forward there for five. John Sansbury talked about this young man. He's a three-sport star, basketball, uh, baseball rather, football, and if you question his toughness, he's also a hockey player. Hockey players are a little bit, a little bit nutty, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> so now it makes sense why he just moved that pile. Make sure there's not one in the booth anywhere here. <laughs> Second down and five upcoming as they speed a man in motion. Leonard with the rush on near side and the pass is caught but immediately flung down after making the catch was Christian Moulton, a junior wideout who caught eight balls last week and that was his 26th catch of the season there. That play really never developed, Jay. Yeah, you got a whiff right there by the lineman because this is supposed to be a jet kind of bubble screen but whenever you let a guy run free, you've got to be on time with that throw and there was a little bit of a mix up there causing the loss. So after that 24 yard gain to Gage a moment ago, now a third down and six upcoming for Liberty. Brody Healy, a six foot, 240 pound senior defensive end was in the face of the junior quarterback. Leonard again, looking to throw, steps up into the pocket and is uh -oh. on the go. He just got the first down as he needed to get to the Bradley 29. And again, good presence right there of mine by Leonard. Jay, as the protection started to break down, he just put the football on his hip and took off. You know, the rush wasn't bad. You see 52 had a hand on him and probably maybe could have got him, but Leonard just does just enough to break through that first level, and there's no linebackers to be found first down. Buckeye State Bank first down. Buckeye State Bank, together we win. So Liberty, the opening drive on the move with four wides to the top of your screen. And Ryan Schapker in the backfield, and Schapker gets the handoff. The ball pops free. Oh. It's loose in the field, and Bradley may have it. Looked like a little miscommunication oh, on the handoff. Got it. The ball squirted free. Schapker in there fighting for it. There are also some black jerseys there. And coming up from the bottom of the pile, we talked about him a moment ago when we were going through the starting lineups. There's Ethan Tebbets with the first big play of the night, the fumble recovery for Bradley. Yeah, you see, he didn't quite have the handoff the way he wanted the running back there. And because Schapker just didn't have it tucked away, that ball came out when Thebitz made contact, and he just went in there and kind of kind of roughed it out of there because there were a lot of Patriots around him, and he comes up with the rock. How about those tackle numbers there, Jay? 73 coming into the game for Ethan Thebitz. That tells me he is always around the football no matter what. And as a coach once told me, if you just stay around the football, good things are going to happen. You saw it right there. And he will also line up as a wideout. He's one of their top receivers. In fact, he is their leading receiver with 24 catches on the season. They'll speed a man in motion, and here's Braden Fleehardy on offense for the first time tonight. Tries to get outside the 30 and is shoved and then thrown out of bounds. Shy of the 35-yard line. Looked like, on that, looked like on that handoff a minute ago, Jay, the ball was stuck a little high. We'll talk about that in a moment. There you see the Bradley offense. We talk so much about Braden Fleehardy at quarterback. He does so much for this team, but that offensive line, a very young group that's getting better and better each week out for head coach Mike LaFaro. Yeah, there was a little confusion up front on that last play, and I think Fleehardy just had to make something out of it and still got about six yards. They empty the backfield again in a quick throw as the pass to the far side is caught. And Drew Williams with his first catch of the night out across the 40 of Buckeye State Bank first down for the Bradley offense. As we take a look at this Liberty defense, which also much like the offensive line of Bradley getting better each week out. Antonio Kish, one of the corners has been playing very well this season. But a guy that is not in the starting lineup time, but we will see tonight is Jacob Barros, is a guy who head coach John Sansbury says, as he goes, so goes our defense. First and 10 now, Flea Hardy to throw right through the oh. hands of a receiver who was open in the flat at the 40-yard line of Liberty. That ball was right on the money. And Preston Wolf, a guy who is very highly thought of and a big part of this Bradley offense, just could not hang on to that pass. And I know Wolf wishes he could have that one back, but the good thing you saw there was fantastic protection, and they are attacking the seams of Liberty, and those things are wide open, and you saw Flea, uh, Flea Hardy just sling it right in there. Beautiful pass has got to be caught. 6'3", 195-pound junior, Braden Flea Hardy. Trying to shake free in the pocket now again with all kinds of time. Looks left, looks right, still looking, still looking. Now we'll just sprint to the near side, and now we'll deliver ahead. And the pass is low as he intended to get the ball ahead just across to Daniel Schaefer. 
who was open, but the throw was low. And there we have our first penalty flag of the night. Just look at the penalty sponsored by the United States Army. It's going to be a hold here. And sometimes, Marty, when you have too much time and protection as a quarterback, you get the hot feet, you start moving around. And when you move around, the offensive line does not know which direction you're changing. And they end up tugging on that jersey. And that's what you saw right there. Fantastic protection, but you do not want to grab jersey. Referee Bo Bollinger with the call. Holding. Offense, number 63. The penalty is declined. Third down. That'll bring up a second down. I'm uh, sorry, a third down, a long call up coming for the offense. And again, as Jay mentioned, watch all the time Flea Hardy has back here. It's interesting, too, uh, to, to decline that. You don't you don't want to play too much field position. if you, As a coach, you want to put him in a tough third down, but you could have really backed him up there. Another flag as Flea Hardy takes the snap and just tries to run ahead to the 46-yard line to pick up of a couple. Back-to-back -back penalty flags. Yeah, both are going to be against the Jags here. Legal motion, offense. Not all evidence were set at the snap. Five yard penalty, third down. And again, that look at the penalty sponsored by the United States Army. So after Bradley had started to move forward, they take a couple of steps forward. Now they're going three steps backwards as the ball moved back to the 41 yard line on the spot foul. So third down and long upcoming. You know, Marty, think about how differently this drive could have looked had that pass been caught. And, you know, it would have changed probably the whole complexion of the drive. But one drop, and then all of a sudden penalties happen. And the illegal motion up. was declined. Fourth down. And, and, Jay, we talk about on schedule and staying ahead of the chains. Things like that get you off schedule and behind the chains. And that's one of the biggest things offensive coordinators are going to harp on, head coaches are going to harp on. You don't ever want to kick yourself. you got some great things going for you, fantastic athletes. If everyone does their job, this thing moves like a well-oiled machine. You have some mental mistakes, a couple of errors here and there, and now you got to punt. Alex Rucker standing back at his 13-yard line to await the kick of Braden Fleahardy, who averages 32 yards a kick. He has a long of 62 this season. And a fair catch is signaled for, and then dropped oh, the balls on the field, and Bradley may have this one. And it is Bradley football. So fumble oh, again man. hurt the Liberty Patriots. Back-to-back -back fumbles when they had the football. And on that punt, after the kick by Flea Hardy, Rucker coughs it up. And the Bradley offense will come onto the field in plus territory at the Liberty 23-yard line. Well, that's one way to get about 35 yards. <laughs> again, with the middle errors, it happens to both teams. You let that ball hit the ground, anything can happen. And that is, that's a heartbreaker for Liberty. 37-yard punt by Flea Hardy, but they're in great field position after the fumble recovery. The ball at the 23 of Liberty. Empty backfield for the senior quarterback. Delivers it to the near side. This is Schaefer trying to get to the edge to the 10-yard line and is run down by Antonio Kish, a sophomore defensive back who came up to make the hit, but it is good enough for a Buckeye State Bank first down. And that's the thing, when you're playing a team as high-powered as this one, Jay, as you watch Schaefer come out of the backfield with the catch here, you, you can't afford those type of mistakes. No, you cannot. You do not want to put this offense back on the field. Fantastic block right there by number 20, Tevitz again. And that just frees things up. But when you give them opportunities, they will not mess it up more than once. And here they are right now heading on into the end zone in the red zone, which is not where you want to be if you're old Tangy Liberty. Flea Hardy coming into the game, 17 touchdown passes and three interceptions. Again, all kinds of time in the pocket. Looking to the right, now will come to the near side with the football and it is run out of bounds as he tried to navigate his way towards the five-yard line. Carter Kuhn, a 6'4", 245-pound outside linebacker with a good job of protection or hustle right there to get up and make the play. And that will bring up a second down call now, second and goal from the Liberty Six with the game approaching the five-minute mark of quarter number one. It's one of the things you're going to see when you have a three-man defensive line. You're dropping eight, a lot of time, but also fantastic coverage. So it forces the quarterback to make a decision. Jack Whitmore standing behind the quarterback out of the pistol formation. Flea Hardy again flushed out of the pocket now. Again, rolling with the football, delivers into the back of the end zone and overthrows a wide open receiver on the back line. Open back there was a yeah, razor. 
Yeah, he was wide open in the he, back corner of the end zone. He had him in the back corner. You know, it's it's not easy for quarterbacks to throw on the run. We see Pat Mahomes and guys do it all the time, and you learn right here why as you're running, your legs kind of kind of lose the accuracy of your arm there, and he didn't get his feet set. Hips weren't pointed the right direction. He just slings it, and it goes a little bit high, and that's a missed chance at a touchdown right there. Brady Razor, the 6'2", 185-pound junior, who's also their backup quarterback in on that play. And, again, he was open. He's a good-looking athlete, too. That'll bring up a third down and goal from the six. Flea Hardy again with protection breaking down. And, again, he's running. And, again, we'll just lob this one into the end zone. This time the pass is caught. Touchdown, <laughs> Ethan Tebbets with the score. That's a Ramos roofing touchdown for a free estimate on your roof. Call or text 614-761-ROOF. 7-6-6-3, Ethan Tebbets with the six-yard touchdown reception. Hilliard Bradley takes the lead courtesy of the Liberty Fumble. Look at Flea Hardy's just escapability. It's almost like a, a take two on the last play where he's scrambling right. This time way more accurate, slows down just enough to get his feet set for the throw, and that is right on the money. Touchdown right there to Tebbets. Fantastic mobility by your quarterback. That extra point attempt might have been partially blocked as there was – pressure that time on the kicker Jacob Walter who's 26 of 28 on the season coming into the game and that one sails off to the right six nothing to score Hilliard Bradley has the lead on our Toyota Friday night rivals we're in the OCC Central this evening all-wheel drive season is coming changes weather road conditions what doesn't change Toyota's capability to keep pushing on with trucks built to outlast and outlive any adventure, like the legendary 4Runner with over 40 years of off-road experience, or the best-selling Tacoma with the best resale value in its class. Now get any new Tacoma with low 3.99 APR financing, plus two years no-cost maintenance. Change is coming. Stay ahead with Tacoma. Toyota, let's go places. Courtesy of the fumble recovery, Hilliard Bradley puts the ball in the end zone for the night's first score. However, the extra point attempt, no good. And the Bradley Jaguars have a lead of 6 to nothing tonight over the Olentangy Liberty Patriots. The scoring summary brought to you by Alcohol, Drug, and Mental Health Board of Franklin County. Four plays, 23 yards. It took less than a minute for Bradley to capitalize on the second Liberty turnover of the game. And the Jaguars will get set to kick the football away. Liberty at two and five, and Hilliard Bradley ranked third in the state in the latest Associated Press top 10 poll. The Jaguars behind Lakewood St. Edward and Pickerington North. Kick fielded at the 11 yard line, and a short return out across the 20 for Olentangy Liberty as their offense will set up and now to the sidelines again and here's Kellyanne Sticks. Guys we're seeing Ethan Tebbett make plays on both sides of the ball and he's an athlete that Mike Laparo was very high on. He called him the best athlete on the field and what he does playing both ways because that's not easy and it's a testament to his athleticism and his character. He has multiple offers and he um, is the best player on the team. He's a junior dual threat on both sides of the ball. Uh, he's some guy that Mike Laparo believes can play at the next level if he continues to work very hard. But we're seeing him, again, make plays on both sides of the ball. Absolutely, Kelly, and thank you. And Tebbets, 6'2", 215-pounder. And you see him quickly come charging in. It almost made the tackle. And his pressure, uh, his pressure rather, able to blow this play up. And Shapker and able to get to the near side as Julian Dandridge. We've called his name a couple of times already tonight. Jay, he plays a position I know is near and dear to your heart, defensive end. Man, this kid has a motor, and he's got <laughs> some range and size on him. 6'5", 240-pounder. That, that sounds familiar from my high school days. <laughs> but the way he plays, the leverage in which he's playing with right now, he's kind of having his way. I got my eye on him this whole game because I don't think they can block him. Second down and nine, a one-yard gain for Schapker. Again, no Jake struck tonight in this Liberty offense in the backfield. Here's Leonard to throw a dart ahead across to the 35-yard line. Toby Gage in traffic. Another good catch. He's a good-looking receiver, the six-foot senior. We mentioned how he's had almost five catches a game over his last four games. And watch this reception right here. Yeah, Dandridge again right there, just making an impact. Fantastic throw and fantastic catch. No one you're going to take the shot. That is never fun, but he does his job. 31 catches coming into the game. Liberty again starting to move here. Shapkers trying to cut back against the grain and has dropped across the 35 at the 36-yard line. Look who it is. 
Julian Dandridge almost on cue coming up to make the stop. You look across the Bradley front, the one end, Brody Healy has 23 tackles and 10 tackles for a loss. Jason Morbitzer, the nose tackle, 47 tackles and four tackles for a loss. And then Dandridge on the other end, 44 stops and four tackles for a loss. The defense as a whole, Jay, has 39 tackles for a loss this season. And I love seeing, you know, four guys up there on the line of scrimmage this particular play. Just it gives you such a physically imposing front that it gives the other team something to think about. And as you saw right there, number nine coming up and laying the wood, that is what you want to be as a defense. You want to physically intimidate your opponent. And it, it forces them into making mistakes. And right here, you see Dandridge force him to go out wide, then nine comes up and just lays a shot. And that is how you want to do it. Andrew Miller, well done, young man. Wilson Roberts, the carry that time, as they tried to get Roberts in space, but the field closed quickly by that Bradley defense two and a half to go in quarter number one with Bradley on top six nothing here's Tebbets trying to get through on the blitz Flea Hardy flushed out of the pocket then hit and dropped in the backfield and it's becoming the Julian Dandridge show tonight another big play right there by Dandridge as he came crashing in big play on the defense by Hilliard Bradley and Julian Dandridge here early on in this game if you break down this game and look at the keys tonight it was interesting. John Sansbury told us earlier in the week their own worst enemy has been themselves. When they don't beat themselves, Jay, they're in most games, uh, evident by that lead they had against Gahan in the fourth quarter. And for Hilliard Bradley, well, this is an offense they've seen. They see it every day in practice, and they already saw it from a very good Westerville Central football team as well this year. Let me tell you something. Cleveland Browns fans all over Ohio know that pain of beating yourself. And what they don't want to do if you're on the Angie Liberty is you just don't want to continue to give this, this Bradley offense opportunities to go down there and do what they do best, which is put the ball through the air. And that's what they're about to do here. Archibald Bliss with a 54-yard punt. Liberty will have the football, or gives up the football. Bradley in charge when we come back. 144 to go. First quarter, 6-0. The Jaguars over the Patriots. taking a shot at the Browns. Uh, you, can sh you can shoot all you want. I'm fine with that. <laughs> She's from East Cleveland. <clears throat> okay. I'm telling you, this Dandridge kid looks good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And thanks to Kroger Great Lakes Distribution Center, tonight's game is streaming live on the ABC6 YouTube channel, as well as the ABC6 News app, and of course, on the CWColumbus.com. Welcome back to Bradley, one of the three schools in the Hilliard District, along with Davidson and Darby. All three of those schools play some pretty good football. Hilliard Davidson, of course, has a couple of state championships on their resume. And this Bradley team trying to go deep into the playoffs once again. First play on this possession is a handoff as Drew Williams tries to get to the edge with the line of scrimmage, the 17. And Williams gets out across to the 27, close to a first down. Nice little jet sweep motion there to Williams. Just get the handoff already in motion. They do that so that he's got some momentum heading into the snap of the ball. Get the handoff, and now he can turn the corner already at full speed. Tough play to defend if you're outflanked. So close to a first down that it is a first down. Brought to you by Buckeye State Bank. Buckeye State Bank, together we win. Saw Mike Leparo a moment ago in his 12th year as the head coach at Bradley. Took the job after spending three years as the head coach at Delaware where he guided the Pacer program to a 16 and 15 mark. And again, the nice hit right there. Carry by Williams, yeah. Fantastic As contact, good Austin hit. Austin Stamp, the linebacker, a 5'11", 190-pound junior, came racing up. Last couple of games, Jay, 25 tackles. Yeah, and let me tell you something. Austin put his stamp right on my man, and that is how you want to do it. Get your head right across the football and put some weight on him. Make this team feel you. If you're, if you're Liberty, you want to try to go out there and also be physical and maybe knock the ball loose, but you want them to feel you so they don't feel like they're running plays on air. 
Williams again will go in motion, and again, Flea Hardy will hand it to Williams. A flag is down as Williams gets to the edge and dives out to the 40, but you got a suspicion this one's coming back. Going to probably get a hold here. You can you can see there when on the replay. Uh, Holding. Uh, yep, Offense. there it is. Number zero, 10-yard penalty. Second down. Samuel Green, a 6'3 senior in at tight end spot for Hilliard Bradley. Yeah, and listen, tight ends aren't usually known for their blocking. They're, they're usually out there because they want to wait, 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 We've already hit hockey players. Now we're hitting, <laughs> now we're hitting tight ends. I'm going after everybody <laughs> I had to go against when I played. <laughs> 28 seconds left in this first quarter. 6-0 the lead. Jay Richardson from the football fever, former Buckeye standout on defense, in tonight for our friend Jeff Logan, who's doing his annual hosting of the Ohio State homecoming festivities tonight, the captain's dinner on campus. Back to throw now. Which is an Flea awesome Hardy. event. Absolutely. Delivers over the middle. This one is tipped and almost intercepted. In oh, fact, no, might that's have picked been. off. That's picked off. It was tipped, <laughs> and the linebacker, Cameron Cole, did not come away when oh, they went to say the ball hit the ground. Hey, listen, all of his teammates sold it for him because I thought he had it. There High the pass tip. right yeah. there. Nice breakup, and he just gets underneath it. You know, you're going to need one of those NFL replays from every angle because this one still looks like a pick to me. I got to see it touch the ground. Austin Stamp tipped the pass. And, yeah, I think it did come out right as he was yep. diving down. But as he was, was diving down, he cradled it, but it came out. It was awfully close. Third and 14 for Bradley as Flea Hardy rolls out to throw, and that pass Woo. is batted down as Bliss Archibald reached up and almost volleyball-type spiked it to the ground. Archibald showing you that vertical leap right there. My man's got jet packs in his cleats because he got up and smacked that thing to the ground. Good job, kid. Archibald, a 5'9", 185-pound senior outside linebacker. Nice and play right the there. Down. Yeah. Now I know his coach will be sitting on the sideline, hey, you know, if you want to go ahead and grab that football, you're allowed to do that too, <laughs> but way to get us off the field. <laughs> Flea Hardy on to kick it away. His first kick went 52. This one will go shorter than that, and it's fielded. And then dropped again. Oh, my oh, goodness. Did they cough it up again on the fumble goodness. recovery on the punt? They did. Bradley has the football again. All the Tangy Liberty simply cannot hang on to the football here in this first quarter. You know, if you've ever watched any football, you understand that that oblong-shaped leather ball is very difficult to keep your hands on. But the one thing you do not want to do is to try to fair catch it in traffic and let it hit the ground. That is the most dangerous play on special teams. And there you have it, another turnover. Well, I, it went through. Yeah, it's, it's a turnover. It looked for a moment as if that ball was touched by about – Every one of the 11-man coverage team for Hilliard Bradley. In fact, it went through the wickets of one of the <laughs> coverage guys, and the ball finally covered at the 30-yard line. The third turnover in this first quarter for Liberty. And as we wrap up the first period, it will be Bradley with the football again. The Patriots beating themselves in this first quarter. One of the things that John Sansbury said they simply could not do, and they trail 6-0 after one. What a tough break <laughs> I feel for this Liberty defense. They're out there playing some good football and just.
Welcome back to Bradley, where the Jaguars lead Olentangy Liberty 6-0, along with Jay Richardson and Kelly Ann Stitz. I'm Marty Bannister. Great to have you with us here tonight. Dean Marini and our entire CW Columbus production crew. We're happy to have you with us here for high school football week number eight. Here's Braden Fleehardy at Bradley trying to get to the edge. And the Jaguars on offense on a second down and 10 after recovering that punt that was dropped by the normally sure-handed Toby Gage back on return for Liberty. In that first quarter, Olentangy Liberty had a fumble and dropped two punts, both or all three, which were recovered by Hilliard Bradley. And they're fortunate, Jay, not to be down by more than 6 nothing right now. You know, I, I really feel for the Liberty defense because they're actually playing some fantastic defense, had chances to get turnovers on that last drive, and then your special teams let you down with a fumble, and you're back on the field. you got to imagine they're starting to feel some fatigue just being on the field this long, this early into the game. Flea Hardy to throw, coming to the near side and overthrows his receiver in the flat, Drew Williams. Yeah, he had Drew there, uh, you know, kind of wide in the flat. That's a tough throw way out there on the numbers. Uh, put a little bit too much air underneath it. Jay, we've seen a couple of times tonight where Flea Hardy has had uh, almost like when you're playing in the street, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, all this time to throw the football back there. What does that do to a defense when you're trying to get to a quarterback like that who's got all kinds of time to throw the ball? Uh, it's beyond frustrating, but that's the tough thing about playing that 3-5, three, 3-4 three, defense where you only got three down linemen, so you only got three on five up front as far as D-line versus O-line. So your quarterback's going to have time, but you do have a lot of coverage, so there is a lot of holding the football. Third down and eight. Here's Flea Hardy retreating back to the 45 and now turning and running. Flea Hardy will angle to the near side, and he had the ball knocked out of his hands, but it sailed out of bounds. So, again, what you're seeing there is you saw a one extra guy come on the pressure there to help out those three men, and then instantly you force the quarterback out of the pocket, which is what you want to do. The problem is Flea Hardy is so dang athletic that you're not going to get a sack on him. So he gets the D-line running around, and sure, they get him out of bounds. But what that play did was it wore down that defensive front, and they are exhausted. They're happy to be off the field right now. Now to bring up fourth down and eight. And again, Flea Hardy does their punting as well, too. And we'll see what Mike Laparo wants to do here. Again, it's fourth and eight. We're just underway, quarter number two. Flea Hardy tonight, three of nine, throwing the football. Far south of his usual numbers. He came in 96 of 172. And on fourth down, no play. Being chased of eight's one tackle attempt. Now Flea Hardy will run. Oh. Angles towards the far side. Burroughs has him, but My not before goodness. he stretches ahead for a Bradley first down. So an interesting call to go for it there on fourth and eight. When you're doing that as a head coach, you're basically saying, I see their defense. I know they're tired. I trust my guy in Flea Hardy, and he does not let them down. You see the rush come right away. Big 55 gets the hand up. Again, the athleticism of Flea Hardy. You're not going to just get him on the ground with one guy, and he breaks your back, gets the first down, and this defense is now sucking wind. You see a lot of hands on hips, and and guys are really ready to tap out. And you can kind of imagine how that's got to feel for those kids on the field. That's a Bowling Green State University first down for the Bradley offense. Leading 6 nothing are the Jaguars. And on the move again after recovering that dropped punt. Flea Hardy again will deliver an over the head of a receiver. A late fly comes in. Another one comes in after the ball was snapped. And the pass was sailed out of bounds by Flea Hardy. He's committed to Yale has 20 Division I offers. We'll listen to Bo Bollinger again. Legal man downfield, offense, number 52, five-yard penalty, first down. So the reason that happened is when you have a quarterback that's that mobile and that athletic as an offensive lineman, you start to kind of run because you want to block for him, and then he pulls it back to throw it right there, and you got a man downfield. Julian Dandridge in on offense, now lining up at the left tackle spot. This kid that can penalty. do it all. So after the yardage is adjusted and everyone gets set, ball will be spotted at the 25-yard line. A first and 15 for Bradley. Flea Hardy again. Again, look at the time that he has back there. Choice of receivers and zips it across the middle. And the pass is caught that time by the tight end coming across the middle. That was Samuel Green with the reception in stride across the 10. It's another first and goal for yeah. Hilliard Bradley. 
Now, I told you earlier, big number zero green does not want to block, but here's what he does want to do. You get that kind of time. He's across the middle right there. Beautiful catch in traffic, and then nice run after catch, running a couple kids over there and getting the ball right down inside the three-yard line. That's what he's there to do. First and goal for Bradley at the three. They add Nicola Kisson into the game, now one of the running back spots. And they'll hand it off. Well, fake, it's a fake inside. Fleerty with a nice fake. He stuck the ball into the belly of Tebbets and then kept it and gets shoved backwards. Yeah, the Liberty defense just snuffed that one right out there. You had dual backs in the backfield, but they were split almost like wishbone. And then, you know, you get a fake one way, quarterback actually keeps it. Did not matter. They were all over that. Actually knocked off number seven there to be able to just clog it up. Good job by the D-line. No gain on the carry by Flea Hardy, who has 10 rushing touchdowns this season. Young man started out his high school days playing at Lima Bath and then transferred here to Bradley. And when he got here, Mike Laparo said he was about 6'1 and about 150 pounds, had a lot of work to do in his body, and now he's a very solid 6'3", buck 95, and has developed certainly into one of the top quarterbacks in central Ohio, and I would say probably in the state. Here's Flea Hardy rolling on the snap now. Keeps the football, dives towards the end zone, Ooh. and gets in touchdowns. Took a pretty good lick as he crossed the goal line, but he's in from three yards out. His 11th rushing touchdown of the season. It's a Ramos roofing touchdown. For a free estimate on your roof, call or text 614-761. Roof, Braden Flea Hardy from three increases the lead to 12-0. Yeah, same look as before there. This time he fakes it, and he realizes, I'm not going into the teeth of that defense. I'm going to go around this outside the edge. He had a fantastic alley and just has the athleticism to force his way in there. Knows he's going to take the shot, takes it, and I know he's going to feel that tomorrow, but it's worth it because they're putting points on the board. Extra point attempt. Again is up, and this time it does get through. Again, they had pressure coming on the extra point attempt. They got a hand on the first one to Liberty. Three turnovers have equaled two touchdowns for Hilliard Bradley. The Jaguars lead Olentangy Liberty 13-0 in quarter number two of our Toyota Friday Night Rivals matchup. Yeah, Flea Hardy is feeling All-wheel drive season is coming. Changes, weather, road conditions. What doesn't change? Toyota's commitment to giving you the freedom to explore with more all-wheel drive choices and the longest-lasting vehicles like the best-selling Camry. Bold, modern, thrilling, efficient. Now get a new all-wheel drive Camry with 3.99 APR financing plus two years no-cost maintenance. Change is coming. Stay ahead with Camry. Toyota, let's go places. Our scoring summary tonight brought to you by Alcohol, Drug, and Mental Health of Franklin County. Seven plays, 30 yards, two minutes, 38 seconds. That young man, Braden Fleahardy, with his 11th rushing touchdown of the season. Hilliard Bradley on top of Olentangy Liberty, 13 to nothing here on this Friday night. Week number eight of the high school football season. We are so glad you're with us here this evening. Playoffs start in three weeks. Yeah, three weeks. Oh, we can't wait for that. That's going to be a good time. And this football weather is just starting to kick in. I can feel the breeze coming through the booth here. This is nice. <laughs> Here's Rucker with the return, getting out across the 20-yard line, and a good return after Rucker was hit initially after making the reception of that kick, getting out across the 15-yard line. Coming up at the half, we will have scores for or later on in the broadcast as well. There's no need to wait to get the score of your favorite high school team. First scores on Fox 28. They are sponsored by Columbus State Community College. They have you covered tonight starting at 10. We'll have scores for you at the half, but make sure you're with us afterwards on Fox 28 for first scores, your best spot to go to get high school football scores in this very important week number eight of the high school football season. There are already some teams that have clinched playoff berths as we play here in week eight. Here's Leonard for Liberty trying to get something going offensively. Line of scrimmage to 25, and he is gang tackled and dropped. There's our man Ethan Tebbets, who does, along with Julian Dandridge, those guys have been the stalwarts so far in this game for the Bradley defense. Absolutely. And if you're, if you're Drew and you're the Olentangy Liberty offense, you're not thinking about points necessarily right now. You just want to get a nice, good, sustained drive, find a rhythm again because they were moving the ball well. High snap that Leonard bobbled momentarily, now recovers and trying to find somewhere to go with the football and is wrapped up and thrown down. We talked about Tebbets and the way he's played so far in the first half along with the performance by Julian Dandridge. First time tonight we've talked about Jason Morbitzer 
5'10", 280-pound senior with 47 tackles and a good play right here, Jay. Yeah, fantastic play to just be able to get in there, keep his hands on his man, shed him, and then just toss the quarterback down. That is a big old boy at nose tackle. Third down and three upcoming for Liberty. So empty the backfield for the junior quarterback. Starter last year guided Liberty to the regional final where they lost to eventual state runner-up Springfield by the score of 35-7 to in the last game that Steve Hale would coach at his Oh. Liberty, and here's another turnover, oh. interception. It's Ethan Tebbets taking the pass away for Bradley. Gets to the 20-yard line. A fumble, an interception, How two dropped that? punts. And Olin Tangy Liberty, as head coach John Sandsbury said, we cannot be our own worst enemy, and they have been just that here in half number one. I mean, if you're Tebbets, it, it'll never get any easier than this. The ball literally tossed right to you, a softball, and he just snatches it out of the air, turns the corner, knows right what to do with it. We all know he plays offense, too, so he knows what to do when he gets that football. But, again, if, if you're Andrew Leonard, you don't want to force anything right now, and it's tough on him. They're having so many mechanical issues getting the snap and just trying to get lined up that inevitably a turnover was going to happen, and right there you get Tebbets, who is the beneficiary of a gifted interception. Jay, could that have been a case? just trying to make something happen offensively, trying too hard. Exactly. It can be frustrating when you're not moving the football and you just want to get the ball out there and see if you can make a play, but that is not the way to get it done. Leonard trying to turn the ball back up on first down, was tripped up and dropped at the 19-yard line. Good job defensively over there for Olentangy Liberty as Bailey Bird with the tackle, a junior defensive lineman. Yeah, and I can just imagine how this Liberty defense feels right now. I mean, you're back on the field, back against the wall, in the red zone. You're repeatedly, it feels like all night for them, and they're just trying to hang on. Gain of one for Flea Hardy. He'll go back to throw, again with a clean pocket. But no one's open, so he'll have to angle out of bounds to the far side. Uh, Jay, that's a good point you bring up about the, the mental part of this for the defense. Take me back to your playing days. Obviously, you had some situations like this where you just couldn't get the other offense off the field, and, you're, and, you're, and your offense wasn't doing much to help you in that situation. Well, Marty, it seems like you're trying to remind folks that I played for the Raiders. And, yes, <laughs> there were some times where we definitely could not get the opposing team's offense on the field, or there was times where our offense just couldn't stay on the field. But and it's when, frustrating, isn't it? It's, it's frustrating, beyond yeah. frustrating because you're playing a lot of snaps, and there's just never a time to get a blow, get your win back, and, and be on the attack. You're always on the defensive. I would never say anything bad about the Raiders. <laughs> Third down and six for Bradley as they put a man in motion. It's green, the tight end, and Flea Hardy again hit in the backfield and almost managed to wiggle out of that tackle attempt as Carter Kuhn, linebacker, coming in, charging in, the sophomore with a big play right there and a much-needed play for the Liberty defense as he drops Flea Hardy back across the 25-yard line. Yeah, you're going to see Kuhn come right up the middle there. Not sure if this was a called blitz or if this was just kind of like what we call a dead dog where if that back stays in, you're just going to go ahead and shoot the gap. But brilliant play by him to shoot the gap. And as athletic as Flea Hardy is, that was impressive by 44 to get him on the ground. And he got just enough of his jersey to spin him off balance and drop him for a loss. Hey, Fourth and 16 game coming inches. up. Yeah. Ball back to the 28-yard line. Again, Flea Hardy does the punting. And they're going to play here on fourth down. Rolling to the near side, being chased. And again, is grabbed by the jersey oh, and thrown down. Oh. Now the crowd here wants a horse collar. And they're going to get it. They're going to get it right there. That is a tough, tough play for a defender. You got a guy who's as athletic as Flea Hardy turning horse the foul. corner. Horse collar tackle. Defense, number 75. 15-yard penalty. The rule was amended. Still fourth down. To include grabbing around the quote unquote nameplate area above the number, and you'll watch it here, and that's what happened. Watch as he is thrown down by Jacob Beros, who didn't who did grab him in the area of the what would be the nameplate above the number. Yeah, and you feel for Barros because he's trying to make a play. He's trying to get this kid on, on the ground any way he can. And once a player is past you, there's just not much else to reach for. You, you want to tell him to go ahead and try to get those ankles or, or get him around the thighs, but that's just a tough play. It will still be fourth down as the penalty of 15-yarder. It was fourth and 16. And that's a backbreaker. You go from fourth and, and then 16 to, to now it's fourth and one. And, you know, I was wondering all night if they had a kicker, and it seems like they do. They've got a good one in Jacob Walter. Four of eight this year on field goal attempts. Was nine of 12 last year. This will be a 30-yard attempt. It's a fourth and three after these penalty. 
Snap is good. The kick is up, and it's blocked again. They've been getting great oh. pressure tonight as coming in was Charles Donahue, a 6'2 junior, to block the kick. And then Liberty with a chance to now get some momentum going after the big play by Donahue blocking the punt or blocking the field goal attempt, rather, and the Liberty offense will come onto the field out of the 37-yard line. Watch Donahue come in almost untouched. And three guys that time, Absolutely Jay. Absolutely huge block right there. This is a momentum shift that Liberty has to take advantage of, but I don't know if I've ever seen three guys come free in the middle on a PAT field goal type, you know, play. It just That's not something you see too often. You expect your biggest guys in the middle there to be able to protect. Ball out to the 37-yard line, almost halfway through quarter number two. So let's see if Liberty can get some offense going here as they come away with a big play courtesy of their defense. Down 13-0. Leonard is back to throw. Rolling, being chased. Another flag is down. Dandridge has him as he completes the pass to the area in front of the Liberty bench far side. That was Evan Nelson with the catch, but this one's coming back. Yeah, you're going to get a hold here. Holding. Offense, number 50. 10-yard penalty, first down. That look at the penalty sponsored by the United States Army. That was Landon Hunter. Yeah, yeah, two-by-two two offset back. Drew Leonard, you know, he, he had the out right there. He didn't like what he saw. He's, he's trying to decide where he wants to go with it, starts to move his feet a little bit, and as he gets out of the pocket, his offensive lineman just keeps a hold of that jersey. There's just nothing really downfield for him. There's a lot of great coverage uh, by the Jaguars. He, he, he can't see anything. So that 10-yard walk-off moves the ball back to the 27. Now it's first and 20 for Olentangy Liberty. They'll put Nelson in motion. And Leonard again will run back to throw. They set up a middle screen and a juggling catch that time by Shapker. And he has dropped just across the 30. That was a tough catch by Shapker. Fantastic catch. And for folks watching at home, you got to realize whenever an offense is backed up in second or first and very long, like first and 20, you're going to get what we call get back on track plays. And that's going to be a screen or a draw, something just to get the ball moving north and south and get back on track. And right there, uh, you see it wasn't much doing there. Uh, amazing catch and just unlucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Jason Morbitzer with a nice tackle. Leonard to throw again. Protection breaks down, and now, down he goes again. Mama, there goes that man. Number 52 is in the house, and he is going to be here all night long. That kid is having a whale of a night. And I'm telling you right now, Julian Dandridge is emerging to me while I watch this game as just a dominant force, not just on the defensive line, but on this defense. He's having a fantastic senior campaign. Well, I tell you, he ran right through Landon Hunter, who was trying to block him. That wasn't fair right there. No he one's going to block that quickly. kid. No yeah, one's absolutely. blocking him tonight. He got there in an absolute heartbeat. Third and 22 now after the loss. So the Bradley defense rising up after Liberty was trying to take advantage of that blocked field goal attempt. The ball was out at the 37. It's back to the 24. You factor the penalty in. Leonard to throw. Evan Nelson with the catch. His 25th of the season. And out across the 30. They're back to the original Line of scrimmage almost out to the 32, but it will be fourth down. So they'll have to kick the football away. Nelson's had some big games for Olentangy Liberty. Five catches against Pick Central for 101 yards and then five catches against Kaufman. And, you know, hats off to the Bradley Jaguars defense right there. You get a sudden change situation, you get a turnover, and they come right out and just stuff it three and out essentially. Andrew Miller stands back at his... 28-yard line to return the punt of Archibald Bliss, averaging 34 yards a kick. Very high, but a very short kick off the side of his foot. Line of scrimmage was the 31. This punt will wobble across the 45 out to the 48-yard line. Right now it's a 17-yard kick, but there's a penalty flag as well, too, back in the area where Bliss punted the football. Yeah, you see like a jogging kind of rugby-style punt there, and and you definitely had a defender get his hand on that on that football. You wonder if it's going to be either running into the punter or if there's a hold. Yeah, it's it, it's definitely going to be either a personal foul or it's going to be just running an into the kicker. Defense number zero, five yard penalty, fourth down. So just the five yard variety here. So. Liberty will pick up five, but still punt the football away again. Samuel Green. Yeah, and if you're Liberty, you definitely want to have another shot to punt that again because that is not the punt you probably hoped for. 
Hey, you kind of sold it a little bit there, huh? That was Gino <laughs> Sukach on punting the football away for Bradley. <laughs> and Sukach will stay on to kick again for Liberty. Archibald Bliss had been doing their punting. Savvy play by the punter there to sell it. Miller stands back at his 25. It's fourth and 11 now. The running style punt. This one not much better, lower. And takes a little bit of a roll across the 35 yard line to the 31. Hilliard Bradley trying to go 8 0. The Jaguars lead Olentangy Liberty 13 0. With 3.07 to go, quarter number two. It's Toyota Friday Night Rivals. anybody that that uh the jaguars down there inside the inside the 25 and had fourth and what was that fourth and 16 and they still went for it and didn't didn't kick i thought that was interesting that was it that's why they got it blocked that's why i made the comment like do they have a a kicker because that was interesting move Mm -hmm. and then you do kick it and it gets blocked so you kind of go well maybe that's why they were going for it on fourth and 16. Coming up in just a few minutes, we will go down to the third member of our broadcast crew, Kelly Ann Stitz, for the music go around Coach's Corner and hear from the coaches, uh, the coach of whose team is leading this game for his thoughts on the first half. And right now, Mike Laparo is on deck for that as we hit the 307 mark with Hilliard Bradley on top 13 0 over Olin Tangy Liberty. Kudos to Kelly Ann Stitz, kind of taking one for the team tonight. She's a little under the weather this evening, but still doing. Her usual fine work on the sideline for She's all bundled up already tonight, thinking it's almost cold weather. Here's a pass on first down and 10. And Bradley will quickly push the ball into Liberty territory as hauling that pass in was the dangerous Preston Wolf with the catch, his 22nd of the season. And the 6'3", 180-pound senior across the 45. Jay, you were talking to some of the Bradley coaches prior to the game. That was one of the goals tonight was to get this young man going early. Yeah, he is a kid that they have been talking about in that program as somebody that can really be a difference maker. And I was talking to a buddy of mine. He said, man, we are going to draw some stuff up for number six and try to get him the football. And he's also got some some Mac school offers. So he's a guy that's on people's radars. And that was a big-time catch right there. You see a, a miss right there across the middle, just nothing doing because of the time timing of the defense right there. Trying to get the ball to 5'7", sophomore Daniel Schaefer, who entered the night with 16 catches. That's the impressive thing when you look at Flea Hardy's numbers, the way they've spread the ball around. Tebbets has 24 catches. Wolf has 21. These are all coming into the game. Garrett Seaver has nine. Drew Williams with nine. Dennis Schislow, who we haven't seen catch a pass yet, has 11 so far. And here's Flea Hardy again. Well, he's going the wrong way in a hurry Uh-oh. here. A flag is down. And Flea Hardy will just heave this one out of bounds. Yeah, we've got a good idea what those flags mean. But, you know, you said it, Marty. Whenever you can spread the ball around, there isn't one guy you can take away that will ruin your quarterback's production because he's so efficient. Again, let's look at the penalty sponsored by the United States Army. We will hear from referee Bo Bollinger. And the holding call against the Bradley Jaguars. Holding. Offense, number 65. That penalty is declined. Third down. So the walk off. Bradley last year went 5-7 and seven as you watch Flea Hardy trying to make something out of nothing here as he was pursued in the backfield. The Jaguars went 1-4 and four in the treacherous OCC Central. I think you have to say treacherous before you refer to every division in the OCC, <laughs> just how good that league is. There is some talent in the OCC. Boy, there sure is. Third down and 10 at the Liberty 43. They speed Williams in motion. Flea Hardy with a defender in his face. Ooh, that pass was almost caught, but a great job Man. defensively over there for Olden Tangy Liberty as racing up to make the big hit there defensively was Bliss Archibald. Let me tell you something. Those Liberty defenders are tired of being out there, and they're going to make somebody feel it. 
And so here's the dangerous thing. When you heave the ball up like that underneath coverage, you give the defense an opportunity to react to the football. So the, because of the trajectory of the pass, that ball's up in the air for a good two, three seconds, and that gave Ultra Ball time to get in there, get his feet set, and deliver a hit. The incomplete pass will bring up a fourth down now with 2.29 to go here in this first half with the lead at 13 to nothing for Hilliard Bradley. Coming up at the half, strength, agility, strategy, and mascots. It's the Safe Light Auto Glass mascot challenge involving some beloved furry friends who are vying for the title of mascot champion. That comes up at the intermission tonight. We are looking forward to that. Jay, you'll get your first look at the Safe Light Auto Glass mascot challenge. Oh, I cannot wait. I am sure that's going to be exciting. It will be. Absolutely. <laughs> Fourth down and 10, and Bradley will kick the football away. Flea Hardy on to boot it. Line of scrimmage, the 43. Very high kick. That will bounce and take a great Bradley roll, oh. but they can't catch it and down it. Oh, they had a chance there. That one took a great roll as it checked up at about the five-yard line. And I tell you, Flea Hardy, that was a great kick. He's had a good night punting the football, That's amongst actually, the other things that he does. He, he does it all, first of all, <laughs> but that was a perfect kick. What you want is for your gunners on the edges to be able to close in on that football and just keep it in the field of play, and you have an opportunity. I don't think 12 there knew how that ball was going to bounce. It took that hop right over top <laughs> of the coverage that time. That was Ian Toller who was down there, Tolbert who was down there. That ball just took that one big hop and went right over him. Ah, uh, the football, the most unpredictable ball in all of sports. <laughs> 219 to go here in this first half. Rough first quarter for Liberty. A fumble, two dropped punts, and they've had an interception here in quarter number two. And here's Leonard to throw near side. Evan Nelson with the catch. And Nelson then steps out of bounds after the short gain to the 22. This is a game that Liberty, as we were talking about earlier, coming in at 2-5. and five. This is about the time of the year when the Patriots have started to make some of their late season runs. Now, they will probably get in the playoffs, but it's going to be close for them. Their last three games, of course, tonight with 7-0 and Bradley. Next week they have 4-3 and Davidson, and then they close out the season with Zeb Schroeder's 4-3 and Orange Pioneers. Pass across oh. the middle, incomplete, trying to get the ball into the hands of Wilson Roberts. Yeah, he led him just a little bit there, but that first route, just a timing route on the out, uh, just want to get your quarterback back in the rhythm. And, you know, if you look up at the scoreboard after all of the, the, the turmoil it seems like Ole Tangier Liberty's been through, it's only 13-0, to zero, Marty. I mean, they're, they're well within this game if they can get down here and put together a solid drive. There you saw Jordan Reed Davis, the 5'8 sophomore cornerback, with a good job defensively. So Liberty knows they have chances the next three weeks to get enough computer points. Just one of those games will solidify them as getting in. Again, one of the regions where there are only 17 teams. And running to the near side is Leonard to step out of bounds as we approach the two-minute mark here in the first half. Yeah, smart play there. The whole left side cleared out. Don't put the ball in there if you don't have to. Just go ahead and get your first down, get out of bounds, and live to fight another day. Smart play by the quarterback. 5'11", 180-pound junior. Started last year, and as we told you earlier, helped guide Liberty to the regional final where they lost to a pretty good Springfield team, which ended up losing in the state championship game for the second straight year, oh, by the way, to Lakewood St. Edward. Yeah, again, with this empty formation five wide, trying to spread things out and make the reads a little bit easier for their quarterback. It's a first down to the near side. Yeah, quick jet screen there on the left side. Just toss it out there and get your athlete the ball in space. See what he can get. He gets you about five to six yards. You can see why they want the ball in Wilson Roberts' hands. 23 catches coming into this game. He is certainly one of their threats. He and Toby Gage have become a very good one-two combination for Andrew Leonard. He's got that short area quickness right there. I mean, you had a defender right on him. He shakes him and gets it up in there and gets you a quick seven yards. 95 seconds left in half number one. Liberty trying to get on the board before the end of the half. Bradley will get the football to start the second half. Here's Leonard. Nice little cutback move. Gets into Bradley territory. Beautiful. Has some running room. Nicely done by Andrew Leonard. Beautiful scramble. Smart play by Leonard. Just take what the defense gives you. Again, that left side kind of cleared out there, and that's based on routes, coverage, and also your offensive line just knocking guys around. So just go ahead and take advantage of it. Go ahead and get up in there, 12. Turn the corner. You know, he's got the 12 on his jersey. He's got the, the Patriots logo on the back like another 12 back in the day. Tom, a little bit short for a Tom Brady type, but – a little knows, bit younger, too. A little bit younger, <laughs> but knows how to move the chains. That was an 18-yard gain on that scramble by the quarterback. And as 
Wilson Roberts catches the football. We have a sideline warning coming up here as Roberts was knocked out of bounds in front of the Bradley bench near side with 105 left in the first half. Yeah, you wonder, did he step out before the catch? Sideline warning. Oh, sideline warning. Bradley. That is their second five-yard penalty. Play counts. Second down. You get one, and then after that, they start tossing the or adding the yards to it. So the five-yard advancement moves the ball to the 33-yard line with 105 left in the half. I think the Jaguars need to get back coach on them sidelines to keep people back. Leonard will operate with the empty backfield and five wides on the field, three at the top. And two at the bottom of your screen. This pass is tipped at the line of scrimmage and caught to the near side. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the ball was tipped up into the air. Toby Gage was just kind of standing there watching everything develop, and suddenly the ball came floating over towards him, and he was able to pick up a yard or two. Watch this. So up front, you're always taught, get your hands up. If the ball's coming out hot, that's the only way you can affect the play. You're not going to get a sack. And they do a great job of that. Unfortunately, the ball bounces right into the arms of the wide receiver, and he makes the best out of it. You know who deflected that pass? Let me guess. Yeah, go ahead and say it. Yeah, mama, there goes that man. Big <laughs> number 52 doing what he's been doing all night. Julian Dandridge, baby. Back to throw is Leonard. Now flushed out of the pocket, sets and delivers, and this pass short of the mark. Far side, Christian Moulton was the intended receiver. Dandridge a little bit upset with the ref right there. He turns the corner and gets held, and it does not get called this time. They're just so used to seeing him beat his man. They're like, you know what, we're not calling it. We've talked so much about that front line for Bradley, but Mike Leparo said that the defensive backs are some of the best they've ever had since he's been here in his 12 years here. He really likes Andrew Miller, Terrace Dudley, Nathan Brown, Jordan Reed Davis. Yeah, they just got some talent, man, all through that defense. I mean, you know, they've been in tough situations, and they just continue to play good defense. Pass caught on the far side. Dudley, the free safety over there on coverage as Evan Nelson made the catch and steps out of bounds inside the 25, a little extra shove for his effort. Tough catch there by Nelson. It took a shot, but got his hips turned around. Nice, decisive throw there by Leonard. And then that's all you want to see out of your wide receiver. Just catch the ball, get us positive yardage, and let's keep these chains on the way to moving. Now third and two is much more manageable. 47 seconds left in the half. You would have to think points would be so big here for Liberty. Leonard to throw, and the pass far side is caught. And it is good enough for the first down as Moulton makes the catch. And since he caught it on his knees, that's where the play comes to a halt. But it is good enough for a Bowling Green State University first down for the Liberty Patriots. Yeah, great little five-yard stop route by Christian Bolton. Just run five yards, turn around, catch the football, and we'll keep the chains moving. Each team has three timeouts to go in the half. Leonard stepping up into the pocket, trying to evade defenders, and we'll just heave this one out of bounds. Great strength by Leonard to not get sacked, to be able to hurl that thing out of bounds with the defender hanging off of him. And he knows he's got to get that clock stopped, and you cannot take a sack in that situation. Wise decision. 25 seconds left, the junior quarterback. Yeah, again, nice little move there. That front is all over the place. He's had some big games this year, and their close loss to Kaufman, he was 16 of 18 for 158 yards. In their game against Gehanna, he was 23 of 39 for 329 yards and tossed four touchdown passes against Bruce Ward's Gehanna Lions. We'll have a timeout called by Bradley. That is their first. <laughs> with the score 13-0 in favor of Hilliard Bradley. We invite you to stick around at the half for the Kitchen Saver Halftime Show. Discover the inspiring ways that teachers from both Olentangy Liberty and Hilliard Bradley High Schools are helping students. That comes your way in the Ohio Education Association Educator Spotlight. We'll update you on scores from around Central Ohio. It's all coming up your way at the intermission on the Kitchen Saver Halftime Report. Andrew Leonard. 13 of 17 throwing the football in half number one, 86 yards, and has been picked off one time in half number one. Pretty good numbers, not much yardage, but he's been efficient, 13 to 17. You know, when he has time, he's finding the open receiver, and he's getting the ball in pretty good spots where it needs to be. With him, it's all about seeing it. He's just got to have enough time and a great route by his receiver, and if there's enough space and cushion, he's going to hit his man pretty accurately. I like this kid's skill set. Mentioned he's a three-sport star at Liberty, one of the schools that has hockey. He is a hockey player. 
Andrew Leonard, along with being a member of the Patriots baseball program as well. And there's a sport I should have played. I could see you on a pair of skates. That'd be <laughs> impressive. Are you talking baseball? <laughs> oh, definitely baseball. You don't want to see me on skates. <laughs> Here's Leonard rolling to throw now. Delivers towards the end zone, and it's almost caught. Oh. Went through the hands of the receiver, Alex Rucker, who was in the end zone and could not hang on to that throw from Leonard. And Rucker is going to be kicking himself because he had this thing. I mean, he he was in great position, and Leonard did a fantastic job of escaping the pocket, saw the throw clearly, could have ran it, and just chucks it right over there to him. And Rucker has both hands on it and then just does not run through the catch. Wide receivers are always taught run through that catch. And boom, right there off the fingertips. That's going to hurt because you don't know how many chances you'll get to have a catch in the back of the end zone. Incompletion. Stop the clock with 18 seconds. If Leonard hitting the backfield and goes down, the uh, ball squirts free again. But again, Liberty comes away with it this time. And the destroyer is back. <laughs> Mr. Dandridge is making his presence felt. And that's why you got to catch touchdown passes because you never know when you're going to be in that situation. The 6'5", 240-pound senior has been wreaking havoc in this first half. And watch this play here. Beautiful. This is how you draw it up. You turn the corner. You get the far arm across the quarterback's back. That's usually going to jar the football loose. That is textbook pass rush by number 52, Julian Dandridge. I love to see it. One second left in the half. And Liberty with the ball at the 30. John Sansbury and his coaching staff. There's... Brandon Scanlon, who was their place kicker. He's 6 of 8 this year on field goal attempts. And that's what a sack does. When you get sacked in the red zone, it takes you right in that gray area of do we want to kick a field goal? Behind do the we want to again. go for yeah. it? Yeah. You're behind the chains, and as a head coach, that's a tough decision to make. Huh? Well, when you go back to Rucker in the end zone, dropping that surefire touchdown pass. It's a backbreaker. It is. So they'll try to salvage this and get points. Again, one second left in the half. This will be a lengthy attempt. The ball at the 37. This will be a 47-yard attempt for Brandon Scanlon. Not much of a breeze right now. Good snap. The kick is up. Does it have Whoa, the distance? It's going. It's he, going. It's going. Did he get that? He it's going. did. I'm telling you. 47 yards. The <laughs> leg on that young man <laughs> that right there. That is a kick. Wow. Little Mr. Legatron just puts that thing through the uprights from 47 yards out. My goodness, he's got two nines on his jersey, just like I used to wear at Ohio State, so you knew the kick was going to be good. And it got over the crossbar, not by much, but it got over by enough. <laughs> and points on the board for Liberty as the first half comes to a conclusion. Bradley with the lead, 13-3. to Kellyanne Stitz is with Bradley head coach Mike Leparo. Coach Laparo able to take a 13 to now three lead though into the halftime, able to capitalize and create on multiple turnovers. What did you like from your guys in this first half? I like that we were creating those turnovers and giving ourselves possessions. However, we didn't capitalize on some of those. We got a field goal blocked, and those are things we got to clean up. What would you like to see from your squad in the second half to continue this momentum? I want to see our offense get more in rhythm because we're missing some throws out here and uh, just continue to possess the ball and let's get some more points on the board. Thank you so much. Thank you. Guys. All right, Kellyanne, thank you very much. And he's right. They had opportunities. This could be a lot worse than 13-3 right now, and that's where we stand here at the intermission. The Bradley Jaguars looking to go to 8-0 on the season. Hold a 10-point lead as we have reached the intermission. Week number eight. Our Toyota Friday Night Rivals game reaches the intermission.
time Kellyanne sits right now. Hilliard Bradley leads Olin Tangy Liberty 13 to 3. But all season long, the CW Columbus and the Ohio Education Association are teaming up to highlight the outstanding teachers making a difference in the student athletes who are playing on this field in their lives tonight. And right now, it's time for another edition of the Ohio Education Association Educator Spotlight. The Ohio Education Association and the CW Columbus are putting the spotlight on these exceptional teachers here in Columbus. Celebrating intervention specialist Maddie Thompson from Hilliard Bradley and biology teacher Katrina Ellis from Olentangy Liberty. Maddie's teaching style is full of life and always encourages her kids to not give up when the going gets tough. She always tells her students, you can do hard things. There's nothing cooler in the world than working with kids and being a part of their lives and their development and just getting to see the ins and outs of all of it. And the first place it happens at school. Katrina has taught for almost two decades and is the advisor for many after school clubs. Her classroom has always been a safe space for her students. We all struggle at one point or another in our lives. We're going to go through that rough patch and I, I think it's important to have that support system or just somebody to tell you, you can do this. Congratulations to these outstanding educators and all the hard work they do for the future of Ohio. Once again, congratulations to all the outstanding teachers recognized during this football season in the Ohio Education Association Spotlight. But right now, it's time for a show of strength, athleticism, strategy, and from some of the most unlikely sports icons. It's time now, once again, for the Safe Flight Mascot Challenge. Take a look. Welcome, everyone, to the Safe Flight Mascot Challenge right here on the CW Columbus. All right, then, let's meet the contestants. Jaguar, Bear, Cardinal, Dog, and Good Day Columbus's own Muggsy. This week's challenge, the field goal. First up, it's Bear. Bear approaches the ball and down goes Bear. Oh, he's got to be ashamed of that effort. How embarrassing. Cardinal is next, and well, that certainly didn't fly. A win is definitely not in the cards for you. Dog, showing beautiful form, and this might have a chance. But no, he doinks it off the right goal post. Doggone it, Jaguar is ready to roar. Wow, what a kick, it's good. Great kick, Jaguar. Last up, it's Muggsy. And what's this? Cardinal is up to his dirty bird tricks again. Well, let me tell you folks, the fans are not happy with Cardinal. So that makes Jaguar this week's big winner. Congratulations, Jaguar. Tune in next week for another exciting Safe Like Mascot Challenge on the CW Columbus. No mascots were harmed in the making of this video. The Kitchen Saver Halftime Show continues after the break, and Marty Bannister will have all the scores from around Central Ohio. But right now, Hilliard Bradley leads Olentangy Liberty 13-3. This is the Kitchen Saver Halftime Show.
Thank you. I think we can do that. I wouldn't promise anything, but... I gotta do. I gotta do scores here. Hang on. Hang on. We welcome you back to the Kitchen Saver halftime report. We are at Hilliard Bradley tonight, where the seven and zero Jaguars rank third in the state in Division One. Lead the Olentangy Liberty Patriots by the score of thirteen to three tonight. Bradley trying to move to eight and zero on the season, and Liberty trying to pick up a game and a win. That would help them as far as the computer playoff rankings are concerned. And right now, Bradley with the lead at 13-3. to Week number eight of the high school football season. There are other games taking place around the area tonight. In the City League tonight, Briggs a lead over South by the score of 13 to nothing. Briggs, the Bruins with that advantage. Big one in the Central Catholic League tonight, DeSales and Hartley are tied at six as they play in quarter number two, Brad Birchfield's Hartley Hawks. And the DeSales Stallions, always a big rivalry. Dublin Jerome with a 10-7 lead over Olin Tangy Berlin. Bit of a surprise there. Jerome has dropped five games in a row since we saw them earlier this year when they lost to Davis, and they haven't won since then. I hope we're not a jinx for the Celtics of Jerome. Pickerington North rolling right now. Maybe one of the best teams in the state of Ohio right there. And they are cruising past Grove City 35 to nothing that game in quarter number two. Pickerington Central struggling with east side rival Groveport Madison 7 0. That game is in quarter number two tonight in the Ohio Capital Conference. Olin Tangy with standout quarterback Ethan Grunkemeyer leading Hilliard Darby 9 7. That game in quarter number one. We'll see the Braves last week of the season in a big one against Marysville. The Old Tangy Braves. And speaking of the Monarchs of Marysville, they have a touchdown advantage over Thomas Worthington. 14 7, the score in that game tonight, also in the Ohio Capital Conference. And in the Mid State League tonight, the Bloom Carroll Bulldogs are rolling 28 0. They have a big one with Hamilton Township coming up next week. And Bloom Carroll leading Taze Valley in that one by four touchdowns. Westerville North, a lead over Big Walnut. Stan Jackson's Warriors at 7 6, having a great season. After some struggles in years past, but Stan Jackson laying the foundation for what looks to be success back in the books at Westerville North. Westerville South and Canal Winchester. Canal Winchester undefeated, ranked in the top ten in the state in Division Two, and struggling with a pretty good Westerville South team. That game tied at seven as they play in the second quarter of that one. 13-3 the score here. We are at the intermission with Hilliard Bradley leading Olin Tangy Liberty on Toyota Friday Night Rivals.
about coming back or I'll lead you into them, yeah. Let's go through the highlights. Yeah, they're going to show them right here. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. There we go. I'll just lead you into these mistakes and you take it and run from there. Yep. Mr. Dandridge. Ooh. Mr. Tebbets. On this one, Jeff. Yep. <clears throat> oh, <clears throat> we're on this camera right here. <sighs> Where should I stand? Just I don't know. I'm trying to figure that. <laughs> right. Right. Thank you. Oh, just a step. There you go. There you go. There you All go. All right. The Ohio Education Association is proud to recognize Central Ohio's Scholar Athletes of the Week. Alexander Rucker is on the football and track and field teams at Olentangy Liberty High School. He's won varsity letters for both sports. Alex is taking AP, honors, and college credit plus courses. He's involved with student teaching and is a youth sports camp instructor. Alex works multiple part-time jobs and helps out with the St. Joan of Arc fish fry. Alex carries a 3.9 GPA. Daniel Slivka is the soccer team captain at Hilliard Bradley High School. He's a varsity starter and has earned the coach's award twice. Daniel has also earned the OCC Central special mention. When he's not playing, Daniel coaches younger kids. He's taking multiple AP courses and is summa cum laude. Daniel has earned department awards for math and social studies. He's a member of the National Honor Society and has a 4.5 GPA. Congratulations to these outstanding Ohio Education Association Scholar Athletes. And we add our congratulations to those outstanding young men as well, too, from Hilliard Bradley and from Olin Tangy Liberty. We welcome you back inside the booth here at the intermission. Jay Richardson, Marty Bannister, 13-3 the score here at the intermission with Hilliard Bradley holding the advantage. Jay, we talked at the top of the broadcast tonight. If you're Olin Tangy Liberty, you can't turn the football over. So what they do in the first half? They turn the football of over. Of course they did. <laughs> you know what's crazy? When you look at the score and you just look at what's happening right here, I mean, it was just multiple times ball being on the ground, mistake after mistake. Stake, all that happening and still you're only down 13 to 3 it's a 10 point game two possessions and you actually have a chance and you'll see Tebbets right there with another just beautiful play playing both sides of the ball all day long but again the theme of the night for Olin Tangy Liberty is don't beat yourself faster than the other team can beat you and right across the middle there, you'll see Mr. Green with the beautiful catch. And then all night long, this kid right here who took a huge shot right there. But Flea Hart has just been amazing and athletic. And then Tebbets, again, playing both sides of the ball, can do it in the, on offense, catching touchdowns. You get him on defense, he gets the interception. You get a block kick right there, which is why the head coach was so upset during that interview with Kelly Ann Stitz because he knows they should be up way more than they are. And then you cap off the half with a bomb of a kick. 47 yards for Olin Tangy Liberty, and that's got to give you a little bit of a momentum heading into halftime. And you look at the numbers, and you would think this game would be, well, it's not out of hand. It's, it's still a 10-point game at 13-3, but you would maybe put it in a two- or three-point category right now. The numbers are relatively even. Marty, based on what we're seeing with turnovers and just the athletes on the field, you would think the Hilliard-Bradley Jaguars would be up three scores right now. And when you look at that score and you look at those numbers, you think to yourself, if I'm Olin Tangy Liberty, I'm thinking, man, let's just put together 
another a couple solid drives to start this half. We have a chance to do something. To Kelly Anstead's on the sideline with John Sansbury. Coach Sansbury, multiple turnovers in the first half. How do you limit those moving forward? Well, they're they're done now, right? And that's what I just got done telling the team is, you know, that those are over. We can't change them. Obviously, we don't want to make mistakes like that. We're going to make some adjustments. Um, I thought we responded well there at the end of the half to get points on the board, and we're fired up and ready to go. But, yeah, we can't beat ourselves, that's for sure. What do you need to do to slow down and bottle up Braden Fleahardy? He's, he's a heck of a challenge for us. Um, we're doing an okay job, but we just got to keep contained, keep him in the pocket, and then work together, tackle together to corral him and get him on the ground. Only a 10-point game, but you touched on it. What was your message to the guys at the half? Just the same thing I said in the beginning of the game. Control what we control, how we play. Give great effort, do our jobs, play together, stay with each other, believe, which they all do. And, uh, you know, it's a 10-point game, like you just said. Comeback starts right now. Thank you so much and good luck. Thank you. Guys. And they come back. We'll see. Second half is coming up. Bradley leads Liberty 13-3 at the intermission. Before we get to the second half, we wanted to give you a look at the Olentangy Liberty Marching Band, the sneak peek sponsored by Music Go Round Marching Band Sound. Check out any of their locations, 2630 Bethel Road or in Gahanna inside the Stone Ridge Plaza, the Liberty Patriots Marching Band. Team three, Hilliard Bradley leads Olin Tangy Liberty. The Bradley Jaguars won the toss, and they deferred to the second half. So we get ready for the second half kickoff, which is sponsored by MakeItMakeSense.org. 
Scan the QR code on the screen to get youths and adults the help they need to quit smoking and vaping. 13-3 again the lead. Liberty on top of, or trailing Hilliard Bradley, rather. And we looked at the numbers in the first half, Jay, of how close they were in this game. The turnover certainly kind of leveled the playing field a little bit uh, for uh, Olentangy Liberty. They had some opportunities in that first half. We'll talk about it in a moment after the opening kick is fielded by Bradley and the Jaguars with a nice return out across the Uh 40. Good running room here as running out of bounds far side on a good return was Ethan Tebbets. I mean, (laughs) if it's not Ethan Tebbets, it's Julian Dandridge, and those two young men have pretty much dominated this game tonight. Mr. Do-It-All, who some of the kids called the best athlete on the team, and he reminds you of why he's called that. Beautiful kick here. You know, the return was set up, looked like to go middle, and he just hits it up the left hash, and he's just faster. I mean, the bottom line, he's faster and more physical. Fantastic way to start the half if you're the Jaguars. Boy, the kicker, Brandon Scanlon, got a little shove in the face there just for his efforts. (laughs) Hey, listen, you're still playing football, kiddo. (laughs) I mentioned how the turnovers, uh, and and I thought John Sansbury, the Liberty coach, made a great comment to Kelly Ann Stitz. Those are done now. We can't worry and focus on things like that as Flea Hardy throws to start the second half and the pass to the far side where Tebbets makes that catch and then gets thrown down out of bounds far side line of scrimmage was the 47 but you have to have that mindset those first 24 minutes those are gone Jay yeah Marty and I really wanted to know how both teams would react after that first half you know with the numbers almost seeming even even after all the turnovers you felt like that might inspire Hilliard Bradley to want to come out and separate the second half and kind of show that they're the better football team and so far they're able to do that but you got to give Olin Hedge Liberty credit for hanging Result in there the and keeping with this the thing close down. After the play, personal foul, defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. And this penalty coming after the catch by Tebbets, he is rather rudely thrown down out of bounds, and that's where the penalty came in. So after the gain, which was good enough for a John Hinderer's dealer's first down to start quarter number three, you're tacking 15 more onto it. So move the ball to the 21 of Olentangy Liberty, 17 seconds into the second half. Yeah, tough penalty there. It's tough on the sidelines if you're not exactly sure where you are and you want to finish the tackle. That kind of thing can happen. Lee Hardy runs out of bounds on first down and 10 at the 21. Jay, take me to the mindset of a defender. You see these penalties like that, and sometimes you wonder, well, you know he's out of bounds. Why not pull up? But it's a, it's it's momentum. It's a lot of things. You isn't know, Marty, it? you're taught as a defender always finish the play, always finish the tackle through the whistle. So when you're on the sideline and a guy catches the ball in bounds and you wrap him up, whether or not you're in or out of bounds, you still are taught to finish that tackle. And they just kind of got unlucky there with the sidelines being right where they were finishing the tackle. The ref had to call that. Second down and seven. The handoff goes on the motion as coming to the near side. The short gain that time that was drew williams coming in motion on that jet sweep type motion right there you'll see williams take the handoff from flea hardy right there yeah and this jet sweep was kind of blown up there by by 44 and a couple other guys who did a great job on those stalk blocks by the wide receivers to cut off the alley and force the stop there now you're in a third and medium and if you're the defense you really got a key on flaherty here because he can make things happen with his feet and you got a feeling if the pass is not there he's going to create something to get a first down Third down and four, the ball at the Liberty 15. Flea Hardy with all kinds of time. Now we'll tuck the football and run, and it's tripped up and brought down. The ball pops free, but they're going to rule that Flea Hardy was down at the 10-yard line. Austin Stamp with the tackle for Olentangy Liberty. So as I was just saying, third and medium, you know Flea Hardy's going to try to create something, and Braden just looks in, doesn't like what he sees, and he knows he's the best athlete on the field at any given time, and he just creates a play and goes ahead and gets the first down for his team. He made that look a little too casual. 11 carries, 18 totes of the football. One of the things that Mike Laparo said when I talked to him earlier this week about Flea Hardy, when I said, where has he gotten better from the time he arrived at Bradley to now? And he said the game has slowed down for him so much. We'll get Jay's thoughts on that after this first and goal call here at the 10. They hand it off to Samuel Green trying to get to the near side, and he'll lose a yard out of bounds. But, Jay, he said the game has slowed down for the senior quarterback, and you hear that for a lot of young players. Mm -hmm. But what's that mean when they say the game has slowed down? Let me tell you what it means. The game slows down when your mind speeds up. 
So what that really means is the kid's being able to kind of speed up his processing. He understands what's going to happen. And once you can anticipate, then the game gets easy because now you know what to expect and you're processing things pre-snap as a player that the game looks like it slows down physically for you because you're seeing it all before it's happening. That's only the case because it's sped up in your mind because you know what's going to happen. And that's all it is is understanding. They'll say Green went out of bounds at the line of scrimmage. The 10, here's Flea Hardy caught from behind. And there again, Austin Stamp, the 5'11", 190-pound junior. And a fly comes in back behind the play. There was a little engagement going on back about the 22-yard line. A couple of players behind the play. Probably going to get a hold there. A little pushing and shoving going on back there. We'll see where this ends up. Either a hold or a personal. Let's see what we got. Ryan Schapker was in on defense for Liberty. He was involved in that little tussle back about the 24, 25-yard line. We'll see what Bo Bollinger has for us. Let's look at the penalty sponsored by the U.S. After Army. After the play, personal foul, offense, number 56, 15-yard penalty, third down. So there's your personal right there. And, you know, if you are the Jaguars, the last thing you want when you have momentum coming off of that kick return and all the things that are happening good for you, you don't want to get into any kind of altercations or create momentum for Liberty. And that's how they basically stayed in this game. That was the center, Hamza Soleil, hit with that personal foul, 6'2", 285-pound junior. It's an offensive line for Bradley that obviously they've done a good job of giving Braden Fleehardy time to navigate with the football. Mike Laparo said it's the greenest group I've had since I've been here up front, <laughs> and they've gotten better as the season has gone along, that penalty notwithstanding. Fleehardy, again, trying to run up the middle, and just as I give props to the offensive line, we've had a personal foul called against him, and now another personal foul perhaps coming here as flags come flying in. And this Flea is, Hardy got his hat taken off. This is the part of the game that you've got to remind the young players. You've got to play to the whistle, but not always through the whistle. You hear that whistle blown, mm -hmm. you have got to get your hands off the guy and try to kind of slow things down. Otherwise, you're going to get a critical flag like this. Now, Jay, this brings up an interesting call here because if this is indeed a personal foul, Flea Hardy can stay in the game because the rule is if you are uh, if your helmet comes off and there's a foul call, a dead ball foul, you can stay in the game. Otherwise, he would have to come out. Oh. Oh, how about that? This is a, one of the rules I didn't know. So that kind of makes it interesting because you get a chance to keep your quarterback in the game for a critical th fourth down. After the play, personal foul, defense, number 14, 15-yard penalty, fourth down. So it is still fourth and, well, a ways. <laughs> fourth and goal, which watch is about Flea a mile Hardy. away. Yeah, watch the – activity after the play here and there you see the yeah. ball pop free yeah so i understand from a defender's perspective why they struggled to stop at the whistle because he's feeling that ball come loose and as a defender when you feel that ball start to loosen up you just keep tugging at it but you gotta listen for the whistle young fellas otherwise they are gonna hit you with that yellow hanky and now you're in a position where you know if, if you're if you're not confident in, in, in your kicker, you could take a shot to the end zone, but it looks like they're going to pull the offense off the field there, and you'll see the field goal unit coming on now to go ahead and try to get three additional points. Now, they've had problems in this area tonight. They've had an extra point block. They've had a field goal block. The ball at the 25-yard line. This will be a 35-yard attempt for Jacob Walter. Snap goes through the hands of the holder, and Walter will simply fall on it, and the problems continue what for Bradley in special teams tonight. So I tell you what, earlier in this game, we saw a fourth and 16, and we saw we saw Hilliard Bradley go for it. And I looked over at Jamar, and I said, man, that's a peculiar thing to do. Mm -hmm. But head coaches know their team, so there must be some operational issues on that, on that line and with that long snapper that, you know, it's always a questionable decision for the head coach. And I think this time he might have wished he would have gone for it on fourth. Santiago Navarro, the holder, and that snap went right through his hands and scooted back upfield. So Liberty, again, the Patriots with an opportunity here after they blocked that field goal attempt in the first half. They have the ball back now after the botched hold and get the ball first and 10 at their own 31. Leonard to throw, near side to throw is low, but it is caught. Nice job over there, Wilson Roberts. We talked about him in the first half. As That time he goes low to scoop that low throw in. And keep in mind how fast that football just came out. When you got 52 Julian Dandridge as becoming a game wrecker in the first half, one of the adjustments you can already tell that coach has made is, hey, we're going to get that ball out a lot faster the second half.
Liberty eight and six last season. They were five and five in the regular campaign. Leonard to throw again to Wilson Roberts to the near side, and he makes the catch and steps out of bounds for a John Hinderer's dealer first down here in quarter number three for the Liberty offense. The ball moved out to the 43-yard line, a pickup of a half dozen. Good catch there by Roberts. Yeah, soft coverage on the edges, and you're just going to see Leonard go ahead and eat up that grass and just get the ball out fast, and you can just tell that Coach John Sensbury was like, look, we're not going to hold the football the second half. We're going to get rid of it. We're not going to let number 52 destroy our offense. They'll empty the backfield for the junior quarterback. Again, flood the field with five wideouts. Give the defense more to think about. This will be a Create quarterback mismatches. keeper yeah, up the middle. A flag comes in behind the play as Leonard carried out to the 45-yard line, picked up just a couple on that. He wants that. And just look at the penalty sponsored by the U.S. Army. Holding. Offense, number 52. 10-yard penalty, first down. Right tackle Keegan McBride, a six-foot, 235-pound junior. You want to guess who he was holding? <laughs> <laughs> would it be Julian Dandridge or Ethan uh, Tebbets? It, it indeed would be. One of those two? <laughs> It'd be the first one. Okay. <laughs> no surprise there. It will be a first down and 20. Glad to have you with us here on this Friday night. It's week number eight of the high school football season. As Andrew Leonard goes back to throw, surveys things. Now we'll tuck the football and manages to get out of one tackle attempt. But a number of guys are finally there to grab him and throw him down as they had pressure that time. And first, Brody Healy. First contact there was number 52, Julian Dandridge, and he was able to kind of come off of a double and boom, get right in there, get his hand on him, slow his momentum down, and then let the rest of his D-line buddies finish him off. Helped out there by 5'10", 180-pound junior Joe Laparo, who is the son of head coach Mike Laparo. He's tied for second on the team in tackles, 48 and a half this season. Yeah, there's just not many plays for second and 19 in the playbook. Four minutes into the second half and a 13-3 lead for Bradley as Leonard tries to run out of problems in the backfield and gets out towards the 40 and is shy of the first down. He needed to get to his own 43, so that'll bring up a... Well, he needed to get really to the Bradley 47-yard line, I should say. And again, so, 52 Dandridge yeah. right there on his hip. He had to escape him only to run into two more defenders there. I mean, it's just a tough, tough night for Leonard. There's just nothing in front of him. The coverage is fantastic, and he doesn't have enough time to process things. So once you get behind the sticks and you get behind the chains, essentially, you are in trouble if you're this offense. Third down and 12 for offensive coordinator Brent Morrison, and it's Leonard. Delivering the ball across Ooh. the middle. Ooh. And some big shots there as Alex Rucker made the catch. But he is Guess who way hit shy of the first down. That right there was a beautiful, beautiful hit by Ethan Tebbets. Watch him come across there, take a fantastic angle, and boom, deliver a beautiful shot right there. Reroute the receiver's entire trajectory. And go ahead and send him over there next to your teammates. Remind him he's still playing football. Fourth down and four coming up. And... Sukach on to kick the football away. Back deep is Ethan Tebbett standing at his 11. All the points of this game coming in half number one. This is Sukach rolling in the running punt. Much better punt this time. He had a lot of time to get that thing off. It took, a, it took a Jaguars bounce, though. Back to the 27-yard line, so a... 24-yard punt, and 13-3 is our score. Bradley on top of Olentangy Liberty, the OCC Central Toyota Friday Night Rivals. All-wheel drive season is coming. Changes, weather, road conditions. What doesn't change? Toyota's commitment to giving you the freedom to explore with more all-wheel drive choices, like the family size Highlander, the most dependable SUV in its class. Now get a new Highlander with low 3.99 APR financing or 4.99 on an electrified Highlander hybrid, plus two years no cost maintenance. Change is coming. Stay ahead with Highlander. Toyota, let's go places. Bradley with the football after the punt, Flea Hardy on the handoff inside and short running room on the carry for Jack Whitmore, 5'9", junior. That'll bring up a second down call for the 
Bradley offense as we play here in quarter number three. Down to the sidelines, and here's Kelly Ann Stitz. Hey guys, ABC6, Fox 28, and the CW Columbus are proud to be on this side of Central Ohio, and another organization who shares that mission is Home for Families. Joining me tonight is Beth Fetzer Rice, Executive Director of Home for Families, to tell us more about the organization and a big day coming up next week. So, Beth, let's start with the basics. What is Home for Families and who do they serve? Okay, Home for Families um, is an organization dedicated to helping homeless families resolve their housing crisis and their homeless experience. Our goal is to get them back into housing as quick as possible, get them stabilized so they can continue to thrive with their kids. Now, coming up next Tuesday is World Homeless Day. Why is that day important to build awareness? And what can an organization like yours help? Right. It is really important for us to destigmatize homelessness. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunately, people think it's an, a, something that's kind yeah. of far away. Mm -hmm. um, so World Homeless Day is an opportunity for us to raise awareness, um, for people to advocate, mm -hmm. come together to talk about the issue, and then locally they can start helping with volunteering and getting involved at the local level, kind of a hands-on experience. And for those who would like to help and get involved with Home for Families, how can they do so? So many ways. I would say first go to our website, which is easy, Home for Families. Org. Um, and we moved families into housing, over almost 1,000 families last year and mm. over 2,000 children. So they need things. When you move into housing, you know, you need bed sheets and um, things to cook with. And so we're always looking for donations of products to help people move in, but also funds so we can go purchase it. And then we also do a big holiday drive um, so that families can focus on providing um, a, a safe space. Yeah. They can pay rent. We can pay. We can provide gifts for kids. So that's another way that they can get involved. So lots of ways to get involved. Thank you so much, Beth, for joining us. Thank you so much for having us. I appreciate it. Of course. And guys, back to you. Kellyanne, thank you very much. And boy, it could not have been said any better. That homelessness is a problem all over central Ohio and certainly uh, in the warm weather months. But when the weather starts turning colder as we start to see that right now, it's certainly uh, comes to the forefront. Thank you, Kellyanne, for helping pass the message along. Second down and nine for Hillary Bradley. The ball out to their own 41-yard line. Braden Fleehardy rolling to the near side to throw. A couple of flags are down as he delivers the pass to the midfield stripe where Preston Wolf makes the sliding catch. And yeah, nice catch by Wolf, but yeah. this one is definitely coming back. Holding. Offense, number 56, 10-yard penalty, second down. When we opened our look at tonight's game, Jay and I talked about these two offenses being high-powered and moving the football up and down the field. And tonight, it has been mistakes, turnovers, and really hasn't been much rhythm offensively for either team in this game, Jay. Hence the score, 13 to three, and it's and it's not for lack of talent, and it's not for lack of, of, of firepower. What it is is mental errors and executions. Those are the great equalizers, and both teams seem to be struggling with it. On second and 19, Flea Hardy's on the run and steps out of bounds across the 40-yard line at the 42, picked up 11 on that scamper. Still shy of the first down, however. Shy of the first down, but man, that's a way to get a huge chunk of the yard that you just lost back. And if we're being honest, as he turned that corner, had he committed to running a little sooner, he might have gotten more yards. I recall seeing Flea Hardy play. I was calling some games on radio up in the Lima area his freshman year, and I watched him walk onto the field at Lima Bath. And I remember thinking to myself, this young man's got a little bit of talent. Just a bit. I mean, And he played very well as a freshman at Lima Bath. Helped uh, the Wildcats get into the playoffs that year, and he has developed into a fine quarterback. He'll go back to throw, delivers it far side, little flare pass, and diving out oh. near the midfield stripe and close to a first down. As that, that had to have been Tevin. <laughs> it, 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 it had to have been because you saw you saw the fantastic catch on the screen, then you saw the contact, and he fights through contact, which is something I haven't seen too many kids on this field do tonight. I mean, just bullies right over a defender to go get the first down. That was not a first down play. He turned it into one. Not often you see a player who is your leading tackler and your leading receiver. And Ethan Tebbets, number one in both categories for these Jaguars of Bradley. 340 to go in this third quarter. Here's Flea Hardy to throw near side in the pass off the hands of Drew Williams. 
just shy of the midfield stripe. Yeah, Williams started to snap that head around before he secured the football, and the ball ended up on the ground here. But, I mean, I tell you what, if you're old Tenji Liberty, you're looking at that scoreboard and you're going, man, after all the ups and downs we've had, and mostly downs, we're only down 10 points. If we can just hang on here and put together a couple drives, I've been saying it all night, they're going to be right back in this thing. And on the flip side, if you're the Jaguars, you got to be frustrated having all of this talent on offense and have not been able to sustain a drive to completion and get it into the end zone more than one time. So they are really, really looking to make something happen on this particular drive. Penalty flag was waved off a moment ago. We were talking about what's ahead for Liberty the final three weeks of the season, including this game tonight for Bradley. Next week they have four and three Olentangy Orange and then close up with Garen Stokes as five and two Dublin Kaufman Shamrocks. To the near side is Flea Hardy, tiptoeing the near side and out of bounds, shy of the midfield stripe goes the senior quarterback. Yeah, you know what? The the Patriots doing a really good job of mixing things up blitz-wise when they want to bring pressure, when they want to drop back and cover. And I think it's causing a little bit of problems for the Jaguars quarterback. I mean, he's he's seeing what he wants to see, but it's never enough time to get the ball there. And then he ends up having a scramble, and they do a fantastic job of containing him and forcing him out of bounds. Now you're in third and, and nine. That's a manageable down for this Liberty defense. At the midfield stripe, Lee Hardy again. Spins the football, rolls, surveys, looks, delivers, and incomplete. Had two receivers in the same space right there. You never want to have two wideouts occupying the same space. Ball went a little bit high. Both jumped for it. Neither got it. And I don't think they were sure which one was supposed to get it right there. Ethan Tevitz was among those receivers downfield. Also Garrett Siever, who had a big catch earlier in this drive. Yeah, went in doubt. I'd chuck it out to Tebbets too. Fourth down now, and Flea Hardy will come on to kick the football away. Michael Paro's team currently leading Region 3, third in the state in Division 1 in the top 10. The snap goes past the punter as Flea Hardy has to go back and pick the football up. He thought momentarily about kicking it. Now he's going to run and gets off a running kick and Man. just trying to make something out of this and gets a great roll on it as well, too. <laughs> wow, look at that as it wobbles down at the 35. After all of that running, it ends up being just a 15-yard kick, but it could have been a heck of a lot worse. 2.59 to go third quarter, 13-3. Bradley leads Liberty on our Friday Night Rivals matchup. That, that just speaks to that kid's athleticism right there because that, huh? that could have been awful. <laughs> That could have been a disaster. He just hesitation faked three guys in a row just to be able to get that kick off. There is no need to wait to get the score of your favorite high school team. First scores on Fox 28, sponsored by Columbus State Community College, has you completely covered. That starts tonight at 10 o'clock. The score in our game, Hilliard Red 14 and Olatangi Liberty 10, along with the football fevers Jay Richardson, former Buckeye standout, and Kelly Ann Stitz. I'm Marty Bannister. Dean Marini is our producer. Jason Van, who's handling stats for us, and he's been busy counting penalty flags, and there's one more he's going to have to look at as the pitch and catch successful. This, though, will probably be uh, coming back as Andrew Leonard did manage to get the ball Holding. to Toby Gage. Offense, number 55, 10-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, we're going to get a hold here on the left tackle there. The end came crashing down, and he just jumped right on top of him. And, you know, that's one way to handle the bull rush, but you're not allowed to wrestle him to the ground. That's the wrong sport, buddy. Starting this series, Andrew Leonard on the night, 15 of 21 for 106 yards. Also 
has been picked off tonight, but has been spreading the wealth. He has completed passes to a half dozen receivers in this game. You know, when Leonard is on time and there's no penalties, which is rare, the kid operates very, very well. He's just got to have some time. On first and 20 from his own 25, he's able to sprint out towards the 40-yard line, brought down at the 38. And a little shaky getting up after the play. Pickup of the Baker's dozen, 13 yards after the 38. Yeah, he took a shot at the tail end of this play where he was trying to get down and just just got popped here. You'll see it right on the top of his head as he's trying to get down. Kind of shook him up a little bit. He got up wincing in pain, but uh, he's a hockey guy, so you know he's tough. Nikola Kissin was the oncoming Bradley defender. Second down and seven. Under two minutes to go here in this third quarter. Leonard hands off. Shapker getting the running back duty tonight with Jake Struck out of the game. Unable to go tonight for Olentangy Liberty. In the line of scrimmage was the 38-yard line and Shapker. Yeah, again, they're running the, the ball to yeah. running the ball to 52 side. Doesn't work out for you, generally speaking, from what I've seen this evening, and it did not there. Still, you got third down. You got third and about eight here. If you're the Olentangy Liberty Ball Club, you want to protect, protect, protect. Give your quarterback time for those receivers to run at least 10 yards. Big third down and seven call for Leonard, who goes back to throw into the pocket now. Bumped off balance momentarily, trying to find someone open. Will heave the ball downfield. Oh, what a catch. Wow. Stepping out of bounds. Evan Nelson with a heck, heck of a catch across the 45 of Bradley to the 44. First down, a John Hinderer's dealer. First down, what a whale of a catch by Evan Nelson. Huge catch, but again, when you give Henry Litter time and you give him some protection, look what he can do for you. I mean, that's a great job being able to find that buddy out there in the open there. He slings it in the perfect spot, and then the ability to go up and high point the football, yank it out of the sky. That's a play they needed desperately. 19-yard pickup, and they go to the air again as Leonard goes far side, and another flag comes in after the play average was conducted to the far side of the field. Would you say we're averaging a flag every three plays, it seems like tonight? <laughs> sure feels that way. And again, let's look at the penalty sponsored by the United States Army. Bo Bollinger, what do you have to say? After the play, personal foul, defense, number 52. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. So a bonus here for Liberty. They pick up extra yardage on the personal foul. Olentangy Liberty under the guidance of John Sansbury. Certainly, Liberty is where he wants to be. Look at the resume of Sansbury and Kellyanne Stitz as we bring you into the conversation. This is the place he's always wanted to be. Yeah, Marty, this is a dream come true. John Sansbury, he graduated from Liberty in 2005, played for the program, returned four years later to coach, a longtime assistant. He's worked his way through the coaching ranks for this opportunity, which is with his brother oversees the linebackers, a special moment in the make. He took over from coach Steve Hale, who is only away, but is hands off to mark on the program. Yeah, Steve Hale, the only coach this program has had since they came into existence in 2005. And Steve Hale calling it a career after last season and handing the reins over to John Sansbury. And as Kelly was talking about, Steve Hale has remained hands off as the head coach. John Sansbury in, in implements his way of doing things at Liberty. It hasn't changed that much, and it's interesting as well, too. John Sansbury said earlier in the week, uh, Steve and I, we talk when I need something. Other than that, as we said, he stays hands off. But Sansbury, Jason, the great thing is I know Steve's always a call or a text away. Oh, how fun is that, too, to be out there coaching with your brother and just having a good time leading the football team. Third down and four upcoming here. Back to throw Leonard, looking towards the end zone, has is. a man, there and it is. it is a incomplete pass. Oh. Again, they have another opportunity to get the ball into the end zone, and it was Toby Gage. There you see slapping his hands in disgust as he was unable to come away with that reception. Oh, they upset. had a pass dropped in the end zone earlier by Alex Rucker, and this time it's Toby Gage unable to complete the pass. You know, Leonard drops it in the perfect back shoulder 
I mean, it, it doesn't get any better of a throw and just leading the receiver's head. So when you throw it on that back shoulder, you're trying to get your receiver to snap his head around, and he does. He gets a fantastic jump on the ball, catches it. Problem is the backside defender comes through and hits his elbow, knocks the ball loose. I know he's, he's feeling bad, but that's a tough play. Defender got a nice piece of that thing. That's just part of football. Field goal attempt good by Brandon Scanlon, the uh, Bradley player, oh, by the way, who knocked the ball loose. Uh, it was Ethan Tebbets, just in case you're wondering. We had mentioned his name in a few plays. Shocking. <laughs> but the field goal by Scanlon brings Liberty to within a touchdown. With 36 seconds left here in this third quarter, it's 13-6. to six. Brandon Scanlon knocking the field goal through to give the Liberty Patriots points as they close in now down by just a touchdown. Two weeks left in the regular season. Next week, we got another good one for you. We'll be up at Kaufman at Dublin Stadium for the matchup between the Upper Arlington Golden Bears and the Dublin Kaufman Shamrocks. You talk about good old good rivalries. That's one of them right there. We're looking forward to that next week. 7 o'clock kick from Dublin Kaufman. Two teams that I always had beef with when I played. I was a Scioto Irish player. And let me tell you something. We used to hate playing against the Upper Arlington <laughs> Golden Bears. That was a vicious rival of ours. Funny to see those guys out there. The scoring summary brought to you by Alcohol, Drug, and Mental Health of Franklin County. Eight plays, 59 yards, capped off by the Scanlon field goal. Upper Arlington. They seem to be a lot of people's big rival. Hilliard Davidson, you know. Always a big rivalry game for those two, Davidson and Upper Arlington, and Kaufman and Upper Arlington. Hard to imagine with all the things that have gone on in this game right now, Bradley Sleep just stands at a touchdown. It's unbelievable, honestly, even with these great returns. As you see it at the end of the day, it's a one-score game right now, and you got to imagine Hilliard Bradley wants desperately to change that right now. Andrew Miller dealing out some punishment on that kick return and sets up the Bradley offense in good field position. They have it at the 47-yard line with 26 seconds left here in quarter number three of this OCC Central Division matchup. We referenced it a couple of times, this Ohio Capital Conference, whatever division it is, Central, Cardinal, Buckeye, Ohio, or Capital, it's going to be a slugfest each and every night. All of these teams have talent. All of these teams, for the most part, can move the ball up and down the field. And this one has developed in just a good old slugfest-type game here tonight. You know, the key here for the Jaguars is can you have one possession where you don't shoot yourself in the foot with penalties? If you can do that, you have an opportunity to separate a little bit here on this drive. Brady Razor dropped a pass hit, that hit him right between the numbers. Yeah. Doesn't get any better than that of a, of a pass, and that's one of those ones you just kind of go, man, let me erase that from my memory and get right back to it. You almost want to throw to him again so he can get that out of his mind. That'll bring up a second down and 10, 20 seconds left. In the quarter, good look at Braden Fleehardy. Committed to play at Yale, but has 20 Division I offers. He's back to throw, stands up in the pocket, a good throw. Samuel Green's been a nice target tonight, and that was a good catch across the 40 out to the 38-yard line for a John Hinderer's dealer. First down for the Hilliard Bradley Jaguars. Watch this catch by Green, the tight end. So Sammy Green, I've been watching him all night, and he's just a good-looking athlete. Plays defensive end, plays tight end just like his Uncle Jay, and when you see him out there just extend and be able to have this wide receiver skill set with that 6'3", 220-pound body, that's impressive to see. And that is also the last play of quarter number three. We head to the fourth quarter, a touchdown difference in this game between the state's third-ranked team, Hilliard Bradley, which leads Olentangy Liberty 13-6. Toyota Friday Night Rivals continues. I haven't heard anything about it. Okay. Sorry, that's the best I could do on those. I'm not very, I'm not very creative, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> we needed Obi Stillwell in here. Yeah. He'll come up with something goofy. Wow. Did you give them to you give them to them too? Do they have this? Do they have this? 
Do they have this? Do they have this? Lee Hardy. We welcome you back to Toyota Friday Night Rivals. We are at Hilliard Bradley tonight where the Jaguars lead Olin Tangy Liberty 13 to 6 along with Jay Richardson from The Football Fever and Kelly Ann Stitz, who is also part of The Football Fever. I'm Marty Bannister, and we are glad you're with us here tonight for this OCC Central Division matchup as Braden Fleahardy completes a pass to the near side to Daniel Schaefer, who tries to wiggle free to the near side and has dropped. It was a second down and 10 call for Hilliard Bradley, the third ranked team in the state in Division I, but they have had their hands full tonight with the two and five Olin Tangy Liberty Patriots of head coach John Sansbury. Yeah, this Patriots defense, you know, it's been pretty stingy when you really look at the score and you look at the yardage they've given up. I mean, these guys have had the ball in some tough situations and they've been able to hold and really just bottle up and bend but not break. Pick up of three. Lee Hardy again back to throw and fires a hard throw to the sliding receiver at the 20 yard line as the pass was caught by Trey Paulius, a freshman, 6'3", 170 pounder. Good looking target right there. It was a good throw and a good catch. Great throw, great catch. And as I'm showing the Patriots defense some love, they go up here and give up 15 yards. <laughs> it's a first down and that moves the ball ahead to the 25 yard line. And here's Flea Hardy again back to throw. And that time, Samuel Green, who's oh. had a good night hanging on to passes, just couldn't put the mitts on that one. Sammy and was thinking about his run after uh, catch yards and forgot to go ahead and haul it in first. That incompletion brings up a second down at 10. That first down a moment ago, a Bowling Green State University first down for this offense for Hilliard Bradley. We had talked so much about Braden Fleahart and his ability to sling the football around. Uh, for him, his numbers have been rather pedestrian in this game tonight. He hasn't had the big completion and yardage totals that he normally has. And on cue, he fires one right across the middle and into the end zone. That. Touchdown. Preston Wolf makes the catch, took a bump, spins in and scores. And just like that, a big throw and a Ramos roofing touchdown for Hilliard Bradley. For a free estimate on your roof, call or text 614 roof the touchdown 761 roof and the touchdown pass and a good one and a good catch by Preston Wolf. Beautiful route right here, right down the seams, and then you just see Preston Wolf go up, snatch it, spin off the first contact, and you right away understand why those Mac schools are calling his house because he has the ability and he can make catches in traffic, which is not easy for receivers to do. Very, very good job. Beautiful ball there by Braden Fleaharty, and now you got an opportunity to get a little bit of separation. 35-yard scoring strike and a heck of a catch by Preston Wolf. His sixth touchdown reception of the season. Snap is low. The hold is down, though. The kick is up, and the kick is good. 10.45 to go in the game. It's a two-touchdown game right now as the Jaguars go up 20-6 to six as number six makes the catch 4-6 here in the fourth quarter of our Toyota Friday Night Rivals. All-wheel drive season is coming. Changes. Weather. Road conditions. What doesn't change? Toyota's commitment to giving you the freedom to explore with more all-wheel drive choices like the adventurous RAV4, America's best-selling SUV. Now get a new RAV4 with low 3.99 APR financing or 4.99 on an electrified RAV4 hybrid plus two years no-cost maintenance. Change is coming. Stay ahead with RAV4. Toyota, let's go places. Scoring summary brought to you by Alcohol, Drug, and Mental Health of Franklin County. Five plays, 53 yards, and one minute and 41 seconds to make the Jaguar mascot very happy and the Hilliard Bradley fans who now see their team on top 20 to 6. Hosting this one tonight. These teams tangled last season, of course, a division game with Bradley winning last year 28 to 14. 
or with uh, Liberty rather winning 28-14. That was part of that stretch of games we referenced earlier where Liberty started to put things together and mm -hmm. made that run to the regional final last year. It just seems tonight that uh, between the yellow hankies and the drops, they just cannot get it together because you take away a couple huge drops and they were, they'd be up heading into that last drive. The kick went out of bounds, so the Liberty offense will come onto the field, back down to the sidelines, and again, we say hello to Kellyanne Stitz. Hey, guys, Coach Leparo describes Preston Wolf as somebody who brings a lot of the juice. He brings a lot of the energy to the team. We saw that in that touchdown in the celebration. He was really hyped after that one. He has a bunch of offers from Mac schools, FCS schools. Coach said he'll play at the next level for sure. Preston is also involved in the community. He was a part of a mentorship program in the elementary school last year and did very well in that role as well. Love to see the guys also involved in the community. Well, show out on the football field. First and 10 upcoming for this Liberty offense. And you have to wonder the mindset now of John Sandsbury and his staff. And Brent Morrison, the offensive coordinator, Jay, I think they really got to start taking some shots downfield right now. Yeah, you're going to have to go for it. You're in a situation now, The you know, you got about five possessions left in this ball game inside this 10 minutes where you have to maximize them and right away not starting how I think they wanted to. That's an incomplete pass, ruled an incomplete pass as the ball popped free out of the grasp of the quarterback, Andrew Leonard. We were talking so much about the play of – Preston Wolf tonight. He reminds me a great deal of a receiver we saw earlier this season who had a big game for Pickering to North and Preston Bowman, who's mm -hmm. another very highly recruited wide out. They're both about the same size mm -hmm. in that 6'2, 175, 180 pound range. And Bowman had a huge night against Pickering and Central in that game we had a number of weeks back. But those two receivers are very similar to one another. You know, build-wise, they're both built like an old teammate of mine named Brian Hartline, who I think people know a little bit about coaching the offense there at Ohio State. And those guys can be very, very dangerous in the offense, and they understand offenses at a high level, so you can really make some things happen with guys like that. Pass batted away at the line of scrimmage. Brody Healy, the six foot, 240-pound senior defensive end. Way to get your hands able up, Able to get big a big fella. ball up on it. The center, Deacon Billy, was a little slow coming up after that play. Only six foot, but if you get them hands up in the air, you can make some things happen. They had to take... Deacon Billy out of the game. They've moved Keegan McBride into the center position right now. Third and ten upcoming. Leonard back to throw. Wants the near side and has Moulton open oh. but overthrows him by about five yards. He had gotten behind Jordan Reed Davis. Yeah, Moulton had a step, just didn't have the next gear, and that ball was just a little bit overthrown. Even laying out, he probably wouldn't be able to get to that one. But those are the kind of shots that you're going to have to go for as you kind of realize the situation you're in if you're rolling to Andrew Liberty. So that'll bring up a fourth down. Gino Sukach on to kick the football away. And prior to the punt, they will reset the play clock. Twenty to six is our score with Hilliard Bradley on top. The thirty-five yard scoring strike from Flea Hardy to his spectacular wide out Preston Wolf. Good punt here. Nice punt there. That will take a good bounce at the ten at the five and will just get into the end zone. So that one ends up being a 65-yard punt. Nice Off punt the there. Right foot of Gino Sukach. Hilliard Bradley's high school marching band put on quite a show earlier as well tonight during the half. We give you this look on their performance, and it's sponsored by Music Go Around Marching Band Sound. You can check out any of their locations, 2630 Bethel Road and in Gehanna inside the Stone Ridge Plaza. Here's the Bradley High School Marching Band. Ten nineteen to go in the game. Bradley takes over, leading by a couple of scores. And Flea Hardy will go back to throw a little pump fake, and he'll just float this one over towards Green. Did he? Oh, he ooh, almost made a spectacular one-handed grab of that football. Let me tell you something, Marty. That was moments from being either a spectacular one-handed grab or an interception for Liberty, <laughs> and it just fortunately to hit the ground actually because that could have been bad. 
Lee Hardy just trying to drop it in and almost did just that. And you see 31 was already cleared for takeoff to take <laughs> off going the other way, and the ball hits the ground there. Antonio Kish was the defensive back. Flea Hardy keeps the football himself and gets leveled as he tried to turn up. Carter Kuhn coming in to make the waist-high hit on the quarterback, who is, again, very slow getting up after that. He's taking some shots tonight, has Braden Flea Hardy. And here's the thing. If you're, if you're head coach Mike Laparo, you got to consider the clock. you got to consider your quarterback's taking a lot of shots. Do you want to just kind of run the football here and keep this clock going? Your defense is pretty daggone good. You know you can hold them, but do you want to put your quarterback in harm's way? you got a whole season in front of you. These are things you got to consider. And Flea Hardy is going to come to the near side as he looks to be favoring his left arm as he comes to the near side sideline. This is a year for Bradley where uh, this could be a, a team that Mike Laparo said may be one of the best he's had. And you see that as we term them the Bradley Bunch. They're 7-0 for the first time since 2017, second time in school history. And they knocked off the other two Hilliard schools, Davidson and Darby, in the same year for the first time since 2017. And they have had a tremendous run this season. Flea Hardy out of the game right now and stepping in at quarterback now for the Jaguars coming in is Declan O'Neal, a 5'11", 170-pound freshman to take that snap. Yeah, and I wouldn't be shocked, uh, you know, to see Hilliard Bradley from here on out, depending on, you know, obviously Flea Hardy's availability just grinding this one out uh, I think they're in great position you got the clock on your side you got a fantastic defense and as I say that <laughs> Flea Hardy is right back back in on to punt the football punt away the football. Yep. on a fourth and 15 from their own 15 Alex Rucker stands back at his own 40 Flea Hardy averaging 32 yards a kick and this one oh, is boy. short. Wow, look at that as it went straight up into the air. And the line of scrimmage was the 15. That one out to the 26-yard line, an 11-yard punt. And Liberty in very good field position when we come back. Bradley leads 20-6. was his left arm that he was favoring when he came out. The, uh, what a break for Liberty. <laughs> There's my guy, Clay Hall. Look at those, look at those pinstripes. Every great team needs a great quarterback, and there's the man right there, Clay Hall, for the best pregame tradition. That resumes tomorrow at 11 o'clock. It's Clay Hall and the guy sitting next to me tonight, my good friend Jay Richards, <laughs> the football fever on ABC6. Love you get ready for the Buckeyes matchup against the undefeated, yes, undefeated Maryland Terrapins. Join Clay Hall and the entire Buckeye Brain Trust for the football fever starts tomorrow at 11 o'clock only on ABC6. We appreciate you folks joining us. Maryland is undefeated, Jay. Does that scare you at all? Not a bit. <laughs> <laughs> 18 of 29 tonight, Andrew Leonard for 140 yards. I think if Jeff Logan were sitting in that seat, he would have said the same thing. <laughs> Not one bit. Back to throw was Leonard flushed out of the pocket as he heaves this one towards the end zone. Oh! And Moulton unable to hang on to that pass. There was a lot of congestion in that end zone. I tell you what, I love what I just saw there out of Andrew Leonard. I mean, running right, chucks it, and really is a pretty dang on on the money pass. Just couldn't haul it in if you're molten just right there, but that hit him right in the chest. That's a tough, tough pass. Good job by Jordan Reed Davis back there defensively, but the ball did go into the hands. That's the third time tonight that Liberty's had a ball, hit a receiver in the hands in the end zone, and they 
Receiver unable to come away with the pass. There was a flag thrown as well. Referee Bo Bollinger coming back to check on this. When you see the side judge, or the line judge rather, that's Greg Henning with his hat off. It makes you wonder if maybe the receiver went out of bounds, Christian Moulton. That's exactly what I'm thinking. When that hat comes off, somebody went out of bounds. We're waiting for the decision. Bo bit. Bollinger's over talking to Mike Laparo. Looks like they're going to decline it. Mm -hmm. Discussion continuing. Illegal participation. Offense, or offense number 88. That penalty is declined. On the play, second down. And that's what happened. Moulton went out of bounds without being forced and then came back into the play. Correct. If he's pushed out of bounds, it's one thing. If you run out of there and just lose track of your footing on that sideline, receivers do it all the time, and you see it at every level of football. You've got to have awareness of that sideline. It's no different than if you're playing basketball and you catch the ball in the corner to shoot that three. You've got to make sure your heels are off that sideline. 8.22 to go in the game. The ball back to the 26 where Liberty scrimmages. Leonard to throw ahead, and the pass this time caught by Moulton, who was in bounds and then went out of bounds. <laughs> Inside the 20 at the 17 yard line, pickup of nine. Nice play right there. I mean, that's nine big yards. Now you're at a super manageable third and one inside the red zone. You can convert this, you know, you're looking at a first and goal, which would be huge for Liberty right now. And keep in mind, this is still just a two score game right now at 20 to six. If Liberty's able to cash in for six here, this game takes on an entirely different feel with still a lot of time to go in quarter number four. Plenty of time left, plenty of football to be played. Leonard looks one way, comes to the near side. It's Moulton again who makes the catch and is brought down across the 17-yard line. It's good enough for a Bowling Green State University first down for the offense. Or is it? Well, I thought he was close enough. They're going to move it to the 12, so that's where the line of scrimmage will come. So they need to get inside the 10 now to the 7. Leonard again back to throw. Oh. Had some room to run the football for uh. a moment, and now we'll keep it and get sandwiched and dropped at about the 11. Jay, look for a moment. As, if, if, as you saw where Leonard was looking towards the far side, there was some room to run with the football. So there was room to run. He also had wide receiver number one, Evan Nelson, across the middle of the field, and he just saw it late, wanted to throw it, but didn't feel confident, didn't trust it because he knew he saw it just a second late and went ahead and had to take the sack there. But Holding. that was so close. Defense. Number three. 10-yard penalty, still second down. So Huge. the holding call against the defense, that's enormous Huge right there. Huge holding call. Put you Should put you right there on the goal line. Anybody any, Anybody have any duct tape? <laughs> Number 54, Bradley Landon Hunter has lost yeah. most of his zero. That's how the trenches look if you're a warrior. I like it. <laughs> so the penalty will move the Liberty offense inside the five yard line and now you're looking at a legitimate opportunity to cut this to a to a basically two score game and again still with a lot of time left looks almost like that painter's tape you use when you're painting in your house to line <laughs> the wall so you don't i mean me i would get paint everywhere without any problem that was it, i could tape the whole wall i would still paint over top of it but. he's gonna need some gorilla glue or something <laughs> on the back of that thing <laughs> So they're trying to get everything sorted out now. Seeing a personnel change. The defensive change. holding penalty is a, is a first down, so the ball moved to the six. So it's a first and goal from the six for Liberty. Shapker back in the game at the running back spot. Also coming in for Liberty to go on offense is Austin Stamp. Again, this is where they would normally have Jake Strzok available for a big goal line play here, but Strzok sitting out the game tonight. They hand off inside. Yeah, and you see that full house formation in the backfield. There's only one thing coming, and that's going to be a full tilt run directly at you. And obviously, Hilliard Bradley was ready for it. That they was, stuffed that thing. Yeah, Jay, that was Shapker on the carry there. So that'll bring up a second and goal from the four. Your play call here, most you would think, well, we're this close. Let's just bunch up and go at it. But maybe you spread the field a little bit here, Jay, and run a little play action. Or if you want to get real tricky, you give them that same look and you do this thing called a play action. 
and maybe you have some guys leak out like you're seeing right now. Leonard looked like he was going to create a running lane. Yeah, it looked like he was going to run for a moment, then throws into the end zone and overthrows another receiver. But guess what? We have another penalty flag down, ladies and gentlemen. About every three plays, you're going to see one of those yellow flags. Holding. Defense, number three. It's the goal. Still second down. Yeah. So another second down upcoming after another defensive holding call. So what you're seeing here is a play action. So whenever you give that same heavy run look, all of a sudden, all of the defenders lock on to their guys and get their hands on them. And then you get some of these guys trying to release into the flats, and they can't release, which causes that holding. So the ball at the two. They'll put Stamp in the game at a slot back. Leonard hands off to Shapker, and he is brought down shy of the goal line. Another tough stand, another physical, physical stand for the front of the Hilliard Bradley Jaguars. They are going to not make this easy. Nicola Kisson, the 6'2 senior strong side linebacker with a good form tackle right there, right around the waist. Beautiful tackle. Brought down the running back. It's third and goal now at the two, and they quickly run to the line of scrimmage. Still a lot of time to go in this game, but they need to get six, and they drop the football. It rolls into the end zone and may have been recovered by Liberty. <laughs> And it is a touchdown. The ball squirted free and rolled it towards the end zone. Looks like Shapker might have come away with it. I mean, Marty, after all the fumbles we've seen tonight, is there a more fitting way for Liberty to finally <laughs> get into the end zone other than a fumble for a touchdown? However that worked out, it's a Ramos roofing touchdown. There you see the ball, and it was kicked the by ball. Shapker, who <laughs> then recovered it. He used his left foot. <laughs> Watch this. Watch the left foot of Shapker. Boom. He kicks it right into the end zone, then dives on it, and the coach is thinking, why didn't I just draw it up like that? That's brilliant. <laughs> a Ramos roofing touchdown. Call or text 614-761-ROOF or kick 761-ROOF. <laughs> However you want to do it, it works. And just like that, Olatangi Liberty taking advantage of the 11-yard punt is right back in this game, down by a touchdown with still a lot of time to go. Six minutes and 12 seconds. One of the more unique touchdowns you will probably ever see in any level of football. Marty, I've been watching a lot of football for a long time. Never seen a player kick it to himself into the end zone. <laughs> that is a new one right there. <laughs> How do you design that play in the huddle? I was Probably when they're watching film tomorrow morning, they'll get that all figured out. A lot can happen in a day, so certainly turn to Central Ohio's most watched local news team. Bob Kendrick, Station Nakin, and Marshall McPeak for the final word of the day's top stories impacting you, your family, and your community. ABC 6 News is on your side tonight at 11 o'clock. It's always great when we do our broadcast. We do our live shot during the 6 o'clock evening news when Bob Kendrick is anchoring. Bob gets so excited about the high school football games. Uh -huh. I love Bob, man. One of the best guys in the biz. The voice, I call him. <laughs> <laughs> he does a fantastic job on six. So the kick by Scanlon after the ball was blown off the tee, it will sail into the end zone. Nice so kick. let's see what the mindset now of Hilliard Bradley is with the lead at just seven. Still six minutes and 12 seconds to go in the game. Again, Liberty was set up by the last situation where they got an 11 yard punt. Remember, Braden Fleehardy had to come out of the game after that left arm was He's back. a little shaken up. And the offense will come onto the field and the senior quarterback who coming into the night has passed for 1700 or 1400 yards entering the game tonight. Yep, Declan O'Neill in that quarterback and you gotta wonder can they sustain a drive and keep the, the cushion they have with their backup and they're going to run the football as O'Neill the freshman signal caller hands off Jack Whitmore has been doing the majority of their running when it's not flea hardy and that was Whitmore on the carry he's a 5'9 junior who entered the night with just 144 yards rushing, but Flea Hardy coming in had rushed for 820 yards along with the 1,700 yards he had passed for. And now a four-yard gain by Whitmore sets up a second down and six for the Bradley offense, having to navigate their way through this, at least for the time being, with the freshman and a quarterback. 
Well, and haven't seen much of the power of football from this Bradley offense, so I was curious if they have that, you know, in their offensive repertoire. And, you know, great stop right there by the Liberty defense, which puts them in a tough third and right around six yards. you got some decisions to make. The ball on that last carry into the hands of Whitmore again, and no gain, so it's a third down and six. The other interesting question about this, we saw last time when Fleegarty came in to punt, he only got off an 11-yard boot, and whether or not he comes in to punt if they are forced to try to kick the football away remains a big part of this equation. O'Neill will look to throw. Right arm. Flushed out of the pocket, he's rolling to the near side, fires back over the middle, and a good throw and a good catch. And when in trouble, you get the ball into the hands of one of your best players, Ethan Tebbets. Makes the catch over the middle at the 37-yard line, and it's a first down for the Hilliard-Bradley offense. And a good throw by the freshman O'Neal. Fantastic throw, fantastic pocket awareness, way to clear himself, get some space, flip his hips, and rip it right there to Tebbets, who is always right there for you. They picked up 13 yards, a Bowling Green State University first down for the Bradley Jaguars, and a big one right there. Your freshman signal caller stepping into the breach here and coming up big time with a good throw. And if you're Bradley, you are not in a rush. Milk this clock and continue to move the football. They'll speed Williams in motion, toss to Whitmore, find some running room. And gets out across the 40. And, Jay, sometimes after a play like that, when a player like O'Neal, who's a freshman, steps up and makes a big play, that's a big momentum part for your offense. Oh, it's a huge momentum. You get a big-time third-down conversion in a critical point in the game where you know if you don't pick up that third down, you're giving the football right back to a team with a chance to tie the score. And on a short field, too. And because you don't know what your punt game is right now, again. It's most definitely going to be a short right. field. Right. I see Flea Hardy walking around on the sideline. He does not have his helmet anywhere near him, and that's usually a sign that you're not coming back into the game. Yeah, I think Flea Hardy's night might be done. It's a chilly night, and his helmet is off, which tells me he is not going back out there. And it has gotten much colder as the evening has gone along. You can certainly feel it. Yeah, that sound you hear, folks, is my teeth chattering in the <laughs> booth right now. I do not know why I didn't bring a jacket, but here yeah, we are. Yeah, big, tough defensive end right there. Now he's cold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only tough when it's warm. <laughs> Number 63, five-yard penalty. So it's all weather-related with you, right? Oh, Luke. <laughs> okay. Listen, my D-line coach was Luke Fickle when I was at Ohio State, one of the toughest of the tough, and he would always tell uh -huh. me, Jay, your production goes with the temperature. <laughs> the hotter it is, the better you play. As soon as it gets cold, you're useless to us. I was fortunate to be drafted by a California team. There you go. You. There you go. Ball back to the 34 to be a second at 13. Bradley needs to get to their own 47 for a first down as we hit the three-minute mark here in the fourth quarter. O'Neal rolling again with the football. He'll keep it. Nice little juke move. Gets him across the 40 to the 41, but he's still six yards shy. So this will be an interesting third down call up here. It cuts down the distance you need. And, again, you still have three timeouts left if you're Liberty. And let's see what John Sansbury wants to do. And... We have a timeout called, and it will be a Liberty timeout. Yeah, so Liberty probably looks at that two-minute warning as their third timeout now. So go ahead and call one on this critical third down. Calling that timeout now does put some pressure on your defense. You have got to get a stop. If you do, now you get the football back, and you'll have a two-minute warning and two additional timeouts. So not a bad management of the clock here, but you really, really want to get this stop if you're the old Angie Liberty you, you got to get the stop. And then on the flip side, can the freshman for Hilliard convert another critical third and right around five to six yards? And I think after I saw what he did with his legs and his arm, he has everything it takes to convert this third down. But what play are they going to call up for him? Because they got to get him free. Liberty has seen some very good quarterbacks this year. They've already played Pickerington Central, who has Rocco Williams. John Sansbury's defense had its hands full with Gehanna's Brennan Ward. And then a couple of weeks back, Harrison Brewster at Olentangy Berlin is a pretty fair signal caller as well, too. Mm -hmm. So they have seen some very good quarterbacks this year. And just when they thought they would have to shut down Braden Fleehardy, they're having to deal with the freshman O'Neal, who turns, fires. The pass is caught, but it is shy of a first down. The so catch was made by Drew Williams, who then got planted. So pressure was brought on the left side, which forced the hot read. The freshman let it go right away to his relief, man. But 
the Olentangy Liberty defense was all over it. Fantastic stop right there. Critical stop. Caught him as he was catching it. And now you have an opportunity to, to make something happen for your team and get back in this football game. Austin Stamp leaving his mark right there with a good tackle at the 45-yard line. And again, a good timeout by John Sansbury as well, stopping the clock with 2.38 left. So they have one left to use. They're going to get the ball back. And depending on what Bradley does with the punt here, again, this becomes very interesting. It's fourth down and two. I don't think you want to play here, do you, Jay? And if you don't convert, then they have the ball on a short field in your territory. But we know that Flea Hardy has been their punter. And let me tell you, if we you're saw not him walking around ago, man, Jay, without his helmet. So yeah, if you're not confident in who you have punting the football, you almost have a better chance of converting a fourth and two than maybe you do of getting off a good punt and having your defense stop them. So you kind of got to wonder, you know, every coach knows his team. And you got to wonder, what does Coach LaPero feel about his team and what does he think they can do? And I think he feels pretty confident that they have a better odds of, uh, of maybe converting this. And look for a hard count, too. They're going to try and go here. Allen Love is in the game at the running back spot. Yeah, check for a hard count. If I'm, if I'm, this, if I'm this Davidson, I'm sorry, if I'm this Hilliard offense, I'm going to hard count, which is what they did, and then they're going to call the timeout. And now Bradley calls timeout. They put Allen Love into the game, a 5'9", 185-pound junior short yardage guy yeah I think the punt unit comes out now they they kind of wanted to go out there give it a hard count didn't get anything out of it look to the sideline timeout the field goal oh by the way that Liberty kicked in the third quarter those were the first points that Bradley has allowed in the third quarter this year uh -huh. as we play here with 238 left in the game Jake Walter who is the place kicker, will come on and looks like he will do the punt duties right now. And again, this young man has a very good leg. He averages or is a uh, it was 26 of 28 coming into the game on extra point attempts, but they've had some struggles there tonight. Well, if he beats 11 yards, they got a chance. Fourth down and two from their own 45. Snap head high, and Walter with a decent kick, very high. It will take a Liberty bounce and their offense will get the football in relatively good field position. They will have it at their own 33-yard line with 2.29 to go in the game, and they're only down by 7 at 20 to 13. And listen, if you're John Sandsbury, you're thinking, man, we are up here battling a 7-0 football team. We have had struggles. We have had penalties. We have had turnovers. We have made every mistake we can. And here we are with about two and a half minutes to go and the football in our hands with a chance to go down here and tie or win this game. You couldn't want anything more for your offense and for your football team than they have right now, which is opportunity. There's Andrew Leonard's resume tonight, 20 of 32 for a buck 53. He's back to throw now. Comes near side, and the pass is Ooh. incomplete. Off the hands of the intended receiver in front of the Bradley bench to the near side. That was Toby Gage who was trying to reach out and Velcro in that football. So that will stop the clock with yeah. 2.24 to go in the game. Again, the line of scrimmage for Liberty is their own 33. Tough angle there on that pass, and you're going to see this defensive line for the Jaguars really pin their ears back because they know they got to get some pressure on Andrew or otherwise they're in trouble. And again, remember, Liberty has just one timeout left to use right now. They flood the field with wides and empty the backfield for the quarterback, Leonard, who's back to throw. Steps up into the pocket, a flag is down. This is probably coming back. Leonard out to the 43-yard line, but this is a likely holding call here. Fantastic push up the middle there, which drew the holding call, but a big, big-time push. Holding. Offense, number 54, 10-yard penalty, still second down. That look at the penalty and that call, the penalty sponsored by the United States Army. So wipe out the game by Leonard. And what you saw there was Morbitzer there, Jason Morbitzer, the big nose tackle, drew that holding call by just getting up underneath the pads of the offensive lineman and driving. And I think as an offensive lineman, you're in a tough situation, and they had to hold, but that is not what you're looking for if you're old hands you Liberty. You do not want that penalty. Jay, that was the eighth penalty against Liberty tonight. To the near side, Moulton makes the catch and then steps out of bounds. Yeah, not much there, about six yards, and that's not going to help them. they got to get this ball vertical, and they're going to have to use the middle of the field, which could cost them a timeout depending on how much time they use. But at, at this point, you kind of got to let it all hang out if you're on Andrew Liberty. 
you're looking at third and a mile and a half, and you've got to make something happen. You've got two plays, basically, to get 15 yards. They need to get out to the 43, their own 43. It's third and 15. Again. You don't have to get it all at one time. Yeah, this is certainly four downs, no question about it. Three wides one way, two wides the other way, and the empty backfield for the quarterback, Leonard. Big rush is on. He sidesteps the oncoming rusher, has the football, and is hit in the backfield and knocked down. Well, you talk about never giving up on a play there. How about that by Brody Healy? He was blocked away from the play and just kept that motor running and made the tackle. Oh, the inner D lineman in me is smiling right now. As much as I wanted to see, you know, some sort of competitive comeback, I love to watch that defender get in there. Doesn't get the first sack, no big deal. Keep your motor coming. And the quarterback comes right back to him and he smashes him. And that right there is how you kill a drive. Now you're looking at fourth and still about 16 or so. I, I just don't know how many plays you have in the playbook for fourth and 16. Leonard managed to get back to the line of scrimmage. So it will be fourth and 15. John Sansbury uses his final timeout with exactly two minutes left in the game. And Brody Healy, Coming into the game, the club's leader with 10 tackles for a loss. Although that wasn't a tackle for a loss, he got him back at the line of scrimmage. It was still an enormous play. Huge, huge play. And the one thing you cannot take is, is a tackle inbounds when you've only got about two minutes to play. Fourth down for Liberty. Moulton and Toby Gage come to the near side. Five wide empty backfield for all the marbles. Leonard. Let's see what they got. Back to throw, rushes on, Leonard steps up, looks, pump fakes, and he's going to run, and he's got some room. Can he outrun the defenders? No, they're going to grab him and throw him down. The ball pop loose again, and Bradley has come away with it. The ball popped free, and Andrew Miller fell on it, and that will be your exclamation point. <laughs> Hilliard Bradley is going to survive tonight and beat Olentangy Liberty here this evening. <laughs> there are a number of candidates you would think perhaps for a player of the game, but I think Jay Richardson, it's kind of hard not to pick the guy we're going to go with. Oh, Ethan Tibbetts, player <laughs> of the game, four receptions for 39 yards. He had a touchdown. He had a fumble recovery and an interception. This kid was electric. He was all over the field. He was by far the best football player on this field tonight. And it almost seemed like he dictated the flow of this game on offense and defense. Always there when you need him, and he always made the play that needed to be made. This kid dominated. Well done, young fella. So congratulations to Ethan Tebbets, the 6'2", 215-pound senior. Big night, and it was needed as Hilliard Bradley is going to hang on and move to 8-0. and And got to give props to that young man right there, Declan O'Neill, hanging on, coming in, replacing the senior signal caller, Braden Fleahardy, who left with what we would assume would be a problem with that left arm. He yeah, I tell you what, if that kid out of the game, if that kid doesn't convert that first third and round around eight that he did, you never know how this game could have gone. So fantastic job by him coming in as a relief pitcher and really closing this thing out. Handoff inside. That was Whitmore with the carry. Liberty cannot stop the clock. 55 seconds left in the game. So Bradley will survive tonight. And, and I'm sure you will look at this and think, well, you're playing a team that's two and five, but folks, again, this is the Ohio Capital Conference. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you walk onto the field on a Friday night, you are going to have to do what you can to win. It's almost, Jay, that survive and advance mentality, and that's what Bradley will do here tonight. There are no gimmies in this league. Anything can happen. And let me tell you something, both of these teams played a heck of a football game. Wasn't the prettiest game we've ever watched, but you can tell we got some competitors out here. Well done, Hilliard Bradley. The Jaguars go to 8-0 and on the season with a hard-fought, underlined hard-fought win tonight over Olentangy Liberty by the final of 20-13 to with the defeat. The Liberty Patriots drop to 2-6 and six on the season. Mike Laparo's team, 8-0, and and ranked number three in the state of Ohio, the leader in their computer region of Division I, Region Three, and they will pick up the victory and now set their sights on next week's game when they take on the pioneers of Olentangy Orange. Up next for Olentangy Liberty next week, they get Hilliard-Davidson. Turnovers played a big part of this game tonight. Mistakes, 
and another close loss for an Olentangy Liberty team this year that led Gehanna by nine points in the fourth quarter. Lost to 6-1 and one Olentangy Berlin by seven points in overtime and lost to a good Kaufman team by ten points, unable to come back and win here tonight. Bradley with the win, 20-13. to 13. Post game's coming up next on Toyota Friday Night Rivals. This is the all-new Grand Highlander. Toyota took the best-selling Highlander and made it bigger, more powerful, and more fuel efficient. With your choice of three different powertrains, including the 362 horsepower Hybrid Max. The interior design is so tech-focused, I'm in total control. And you've got to love the 12.3-inch touchscreen. The big news is right back here with over 20 cubic feet of cargo space. Behind a full-size third row. Step up to something grand. Toyota. Let's go places. Hilliard Bradley now 8-0. They defeat Olentangy Liberty 20-13 to tonight as the Jaguars knock off the Patriots in an OCC Central Division get-together. It was, again, just a very physical, typical OCC Friday night. And with the win, Mike Leparo's team is now 8-0 on the season. And he is right now down on the field with Kelly Anstitz. Kelly? Coach, your guys right behind us ringing the bell. I'm sure some things you guys want to clean up, but you're still able to pull away with the win. It's a tough conference to remain undefeated on the season. How proud are you of their effort? I'm super proud. You know, it's hard, this, this roller coaster of a schedule we have. That's every week you have to be at the top of the roller coaster. You, can, you can't waver at all. So I think our kids did a, a good job of fighting tonight. We got a lot to clean up, especially in the special teams area. But I think our defense really came through for us. Ethan Tebbett was our player of the game. He was all over the field tonight. Talk about his effort, Coach. He's a phenomenal player. He's a phenomenal kid. Um, you can't say enough good things about him. He's just a, a great football player. Old throwback. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Your freshman quarterback stepping up, too. What does that say about him and his character? He, he's ready. You know, he's ready. He gets just you know just as many reps as our starter does in practice. He's ready for any moment, and, and great job by him stepping in. And because you guys won tonight, we are presenting you with our trophy. It's lovingly what we refer to as the orb. Where are you going to put this one, Coach? It'll go in the trophy case in the school with the other ones. It's a great, great job. Thank you for covering us tonight. It's fantastic. Awesome. Thank you so much, Coach, and congratulations. Thank you very much. Guys. Kellyanne, thank you very much. And congratulations to Mike Leparo and his football team as they go to 8-0 and on the season. They were down celebrating with the student section and the band a moment ago, and they start to make their way back towards the end zone where they will celebrate and move on to next week. That's the way you have to have that mentality right now. But uh, Olentangy Liberty gave them all they could handle this evening in this one, Jay Richardson. And, again, as we talked about, you played in this league back in the day. You know what this league is like. The numbers were pretty even. This Not, not surprising this game played out the way that it did. You know, the margin for victory is, is so razor thin in this league. I mean, a, a call here, a dropped pass here. You look at three drops that could have changed this score dramatically. And just because of, you know, some, some not sticky enough gloves, Loves, you end up with you know one score game and then not enough time to close it out and you look at both teams and you you can't help but feel good about you know your ball club I think if you're old Hedge Liberty Patriots you still got to feel good about your kids and they went out there and played a very good football team yes they lost yes it was ugly but they battled the entire time and then hats off to the Jaguars they handled their business and in clutch moments they made the big plays and again the final tonight 20 to 13 Hilliard Bradley goes to 8 and 0 with the victory over Olin Tangy Liberty. That is a wrap of this edition of Toyota's Friday Night Rivals presented by Columbus State Community College. We're back with you next Friday night for what should be a dandy again in the Ohio Capital Conference. We'll be at Dublin Kaufman for the matchup featuring the Upper Arlington Golden Bears and the Shamrocks of Dublin Kaufman. On behalf of Jay Richardson, Kelly Ann Stitz, our producer Dean Marini, our stat man Jason Van Hoos, and our entire CW Columbus broadcast team, I'm Marty Banos, reminding you once again the final score tonight here at Bradley. The Jaguars are 8-0, ranked third in the state. They stay undefeated as they knock off Olin Tangy Liberty by the final of 20-13. So long, everyone. Thank you.